I'll have to go. I'll go give it to you. Eva. How are you? How are you, Eve? be between Railway Union and Balbriggan. Balbriggan have won the toss this morning and they're going to elect to bowl first and in the other semi-final it is between Merion and the Hills and Anglesey Road so just a few minutes from us here in Pembroke.
Beautiful morning. As you can see on your screen, Sean Hussey here. Delighted to be joined by Craig Senior. Here are the team news, and we'll start with Bal Brigham. Well, Bal Brigham, uh, they have a fairly settled side at this stage. The interesting thing about the Bal Brigham side, and I know they're in the field first here, but they've only used the six batsmen through the six qualifying games. Uh, certainly, they'll be looking to the uh, runs of Connor Fletcher behind the sticks as well. And, of course, Captain Gregory Ford, he's averaging 42. So, Bell Brigham, while well, they're in the field first, and they'll be looking to their main bowlers of Pollock and Durrock and Wilson. And here's the Railway Union side. Yeah, the top with Kenny Carroll, so experienced. Such an important player for the side. Looks like he's going to open alongside Riley Mudford here to open proceedings. Philippe LaRue. Such an important young player, Ireland under-19 star. Busy juggling exams as well. So he's here today, Liam McCarthy. We've seen for the Munster Reds and interprovincial action, Brandon Kruger as well, and young Sean O'Brien, a nephew of Kevin and Niall. He brings a bit of youth as well to the side. Amza Man and Packer Zaman, very impressive in this Alan Murray Cup competition already. Well... Beautiful day for the... You couldn't ask for a better day for a semi-final and final here in Pembroke. The sun is shining, the sky is nicely blue. The grounds are looking great, and the umpires are heading on to the ground. Yeah, interesting that Balbriggan won the toss and have elected the ball first. So very comfortable in chasing. And Railway Union, so experienced, and in particular, Kenny Carroll. He's been around for an awful long time, delivered on the biggest of stages for club and indeed country. The uh, umpires look kind of lonely out there in the middle, uh, waiting for the players to join them on the field. Well, last minute chat for the Balbriggan side over by their resting area. The umpires today as an Ali Meg and Willie Clark. Well, here we go. Kenny Carroll strides to the crease alongside Riley Mudford. So a very interesting opening half hour or so. Beautiful sunshine here in Pembroke Cricket Club. Just a reminder that the other semi-final is taking place between the Hills and Merion. And the final will take place a little bit later between the winners of this and the winners of the other semi-final which will take place around half four here live from Sydney Parade a game you can see also on Cricket Leinster The Hills have won the toss and they'll be bowling up on Anglesey Road. So similar decision to the one that Bob Brigham have made here. And they're going to start straight away with a little bit of spin. It's often thought runs, certainly in cup games, cup semi-finals, score on the door is the important thing to know. And yet both, both semi-finals, the team winning the toss have decided to field first. Bob Brigham, very comfortable throughout this tournament in chasing Connor Fletcher with a magnificent century against Clontarf to guide them over the line into this semi final. So it's going to be Dylan Lewis to open the bowling and get us underway here on final day here in Pembroke. Yeah! And immediately he finds the breakthrough, and Kenny Carroll has dragged on. A really innocuous start, and Kenny Carroll can't believe it. And that is not what Railway needed. And Bal Brigham can't believe it. They strike immediately. Well, that's an amazing start for Bal Brigham. It just seemed a, a very sort of genteel, comfortable start. The players going out to the middle, finding their spots. And then the first ball comes down, and the first thing Kenny Carroll does is cut it back onto his stumps. Yeah, he can't believe it, Kenny Carroll. Just trudging off. See it here, he goes back foot immediately. 
and he drags it, hits off his right foot onto the stumps. He can't believe it. What a start for Balbriggan. Well, he is absolutely gutted at that, and why not? Semi-final, and first ball, first wicket. Well, that's definitely the start Balbriggan were looking for. He's trying to manufacture a shot out to the offside there, get going off the mark immediately, but instead, as you say, he had the long trudge back to the pavilion. So unfortunate that it ricocheted off the foot onto the stumps, and that's a hammer blow. What a start for Balbriggan. Well, they won the toss and immediately uh, picked up a wicket. So immediately under pressure, and Balbriggan have a slip in place. And the first run of finals day. Yep, just played out to leg side and I suppose the rebuilding begins and here we are with two balls gone. Uh, one for one. First run of finals day goes to Punra Meha for Railway Union. He's the new batter to the crease. New to Ireland, former UAE under 19 international. And on strike is Riley Mudford for Railway. So no real spin from Dylan Louise. Not looking to spin it. Just get it into the surface. Two in the deep on the leg side. Long on. And cow corner. Only two fielders allowed outside the circle for the opening. Six overs. And what a shot. That is. That's gone all the way from Riley Mudford. Well, that was tossed up from Dylan Louise. The man was on the boundary for a split second. He might have thought he was in the game, but it sailed over his head and into the nets. And what a shot. And the first boundary for Railway Union. And just what they needed after the opening dismissal of Kenny Carroll. So immediately you can see the intent from Riley Mudford. What a couple of deliveries we've had here, Craig. Well, it's all happening in this first over. You could see he was trying to repeat the shot there. As you say, the fielder down there. Well, Samuel Wilson, he would have felt he was in the game for a moment. In the air, and a chance. And the second wicket falls. Well, this over has had a little bit of everything. It has its second wicket, Pun Rameha. Well, it was tossed up from Dylan Louise and he took it on. And mid on, took a very good catch running backwards. And the second wicket has fallen here. And Railway, well, they're in disarray to start. Eight for two. And Dylan Louise has his second wicket. And what a wonderful start for Balbriggan to finals day. Well, it's been an early morning start, but it seems like the Railway players, it's all or nothing. He went for the big hit again towards the nets. And on this occasion, for railway, it didn't come off in a second wicket in the first over. Eight for one. Eight for two. Yeah, eight for two. And it was Andrew Darrick who took the catch, so a really good catch from him. Running backwards, never easy. And after the opening over, Dylan Louise has taken two wickets and gone for eight runs. As you can see, it was tossed up and he took it on, Pun Rameha. And immediately he knew he was in a little bit of bother. And a wonderful catch. And the celebration. Look what it means to Balbriggan. They can't believe it. Two in the opening over. And Railway are immediately on the back foot. And in truth, they'll be a little bit disappointed. Kenny Carroll so unlucky. Ricocheting off his right foot onto the stumps. Dragged on. But that one, considering Riley Mudford had already found the boundary. Found the six. To give away the second wicket would be really disappointing. On a, coming on from the nursery end of the ground is Samuel Vimsey. And he's going to bowl some left arm seamers. And Philippe, Philippe LaRue is the non striker. New to the crease. A good pace to start from Vimsey. Well, after all the action in the first over. Well, Railway really are going to have to try and settle down, or are they going to try and hit their way out of this difficulty? I mean, that's that's the choice facing them. It's a semi-final, it's all or nothing. 
Well, I think if you're these two, you've got to just try and get through the next couple of hours, particularly Philippe LaRue. Let him get settled out there. Uh, Riley Mudford is going to take the aggressive approach. It'll just be a single, but immediately has timed a couple nicely as Mudford. Yeah, he seems to be in good touch anyway. That six down to the nets was a nice, clean, pure hit. And even this one just driven up on the onside with enough pace to let him get it through for the single. So deep square is out for Philippe LaRue. And a deep third. And a nice start for LaRue. Should pick up a couple. So immediately can, you can see the ball coming onto the bat nicely here in Pembroke. Dale McDonough and his team have done another wonderful job. This is one of the hybrid pitches that we've seen. We've seen also up on Anglesey Road. Similarly, they're playing on a hybrid wicket. A good pace from Vimsey. Yes, he's uh, certainly finding his mark straight away. Perhaps not with the same success as his bowling partner. But he's off to a fine start. Umpire Azia has... Um, He's just checking the footmarks. Great work from our technical department today. Camera at each end of the ground. And the air, but it's a good shot from Philippe LaRue. And it's gone for a bound, and it'll probably just give an indication of the quality of the wicket. He's not hit that with real, any real authority or any real power, but it's flown away to the fence. And a boundary for Philippe LaRue, the second one of the morning for Railway Union. Well, that'll please uh, Philippe LaRue that he doesn't have to over hit to reach the boundary. Just pushed it through the covers and the outfield now in Sydney Parade starting to quicken up this season. A oh, real bounce. From MC and he does well, LaRue. Gets down the other end. So eight runs coming, coming from his opening over for the left armour. And after two overs, it's 16 for two. And there's the boundary again during that over. And it was just running away from the fielders all the way through. Just a reminder that there's another semi-final taking place. Marion and the Hills up at Anglesey Road. And the Hills have won the toss. And they're bowling first, and Marion are five without loss after two overs. And the winners of that one will play the winners of this one later in the LH Group Alan Murray Cup final. That's from around 4.30 p.m., beautiful day weather-wise here at Pembroke. And we're going to immediately have a change of bowling. So Dylan Louise, often that opening over from spin is used to just help the bowling team settle into the game where they found two wickets from it. And... Greg Ford is almost saying to Dylan Louise, you've done your job now. It's time to see, can any of our seamers get some movement? And it's going to be Matt Pollard from the St. John's end of the ground. Well, that's a nice bit of carry through to the keeper. Pollard would be delighted with that. Yeah, it's been a real sign over the last few weeks of the interprovincial games played here at Pembroke and indeed the club games that there's a real carry coming from these wickets the ones to the right as you look at it on your screen there's some of the quicker wickets in the ground but this one one of the hybrid ones and getting good carry early this morning and a chance here it could be a run out direct hit and in the end they get home but risky running from railway. It was really risky, but they called early and they trusted each other and they just went for it and that gave them the opportunity to get there. Yes, the direct hit would have been interesting, but on this occasion they got home safely. So an eventful start to the morning here in Pembroke. 17 for two railway. Well, we've seen from Riley Mudford. He's got attack on his mind. And we see it here again. Off the inside of the bat. 
and it's gone for another boundary. So fortune favouring the brave in the case of Riley Mudford. And a couple of times, you're just seeing how that ball is flying off the bat. So there's real reward for the railway batters. That one a little bit fortunate, but goes for a boundary. Good, good attacking intent from Mudford. Well, he certainly has set his stool out. He's not going to hang around. He's going to do his best to get railway a decent total and do it quickly. Oh, and an outside edge. And again, fortune favouring the brave. It was too close to cut off the outside edge. Goes for four. So Mudford taking the attack to Railway U, uh, to Balbriggan. And I think it's maybe an acknowledgement of how good a wicket this is that Railway feel like they're going to need a big score here if they're going to defend it against this wonderful Balbriggan batting lineup. But a boundary again, two in a row, and Pollard under a slight bit of pressure. Well, he took the outside edge. It flew past, I suppose, first, second slip and ran away to the boundary. Hard to set a field for that sort of shot. But Pollard would be delighted. He's found an edge already. Again, this is a wonderful shot from Riley Mudford. This is the shot of the day. And it could well be the shot of the day come the end of the day because that is a wonderful shot. Just lifted over mid-off all the way for six. And he looks in really good touch here. There's Riley Mudford. A couple of sixes already. A couple of boundaries. And this is wonderful batting. A powerful shot, three boundaries in a row, and Pollard's under real pressure here to try and get out of the over. Uh, clever batting from Riley Mudford. We'll keep the strike. Three overs gone, and we've had a couple of wickets, a couple of sixes, and some boundaries, and it's 32 for two. As you can see, there's the one that just fly it off the outside edge that was the second boundary then this is probably the shot of the, day, the morning so far glorious shot and he looks like a powerful player in really good form yep he came took a couple of steps down the track there gave himself some room used his long levers but just hit without trying to over hit not trying to put too much power into it he realized that he could reach that boundary 52 53 meters away just with his timing and again He's just showing the way he's going. He's moved on to 23 very quickly. Well, this looks set to be a glorious day of cricket here in Pembroke. So if you're in the area, do pop in. Wonderful crowd already building. And in the air, but Long on is back. So brings LaRue on strike. Well, Mumford is certainly uh, not hanging around. He's racing through. LaRue, of course, he's well capable of batting and finding the boundary himself, but at the moment, he finds himself very much the junior partner. And I think Mudford's got real clarity in what he's doing. There's no holding back from him. In the air, and again, that's a couple of times LaRue's just been tucked up by the extra pace and bounce from Vimsey. And it's that angle, that left armour, uh, troubling LaRue slightly. But does well, gets back up the other end and brings Mudford back to strike. But immediately you've seen this morning so far, real bounce, looks a beautiful wicket, only going to get better and hotter as the day goes on. Wonderful weather we've had over the last week in Pembroke. Well, that's another big swing of the bat from Mumford, but this time there's one of the two fielders outside the ring for this power play is in exactly the right spot. They keep it to a single. But what's, what is also worth noting here is, although Mumford is going big and going for the boundaries, they're also willing to take the quick singles as well. A couple of them have been tight, and a couple of them have just been well taken, so Railway are determined to get runs on the board here. Pulled into the deep and backward of Owen Birch, the man out there, will just be a single. I think you're right, Craig. I think it tells you, the viewers at home, that this is a really good wicket. It's going to need to be a big score from Railway if they are going to be able to defend it. Very quick scoring ground, this. And Balbriggan, well, they've got real power and players in form in their batting lineup. So. Railway are well aware that they're going to need 
a score in excess of 165. Again, just another single. Just changing ends. Keep asking the bowlers different questions. But at the moment, well, Railway's run rate is certainly well up there. Yeah, nines, tens and over. But those two wickets to fall, well, will that come back to bite them for the final few overs? High in the air, and it's a chance. It's been called, and it's the third wicket to fall. That's a superb catch. And LaRue has been dismissed. And again, it's the extra bounce from Vilmsey that undoes for the Irish Under-19 International. And they'd be a little bit disappointed. Hasn't looked all that comfortable against the extra pace. And the third wicket has fallen inside the opening power play. And Railway Union are 37 for three. Well, that one just went straight up in the air. Never left the middle of the strip. Fielder came in and it's right up there. And you can see the bowler backing away as the fielder calls for it. Leave it to him. That's a good safe catch. And Philip LaRue departs the scene. Railway 37 for three. You're right. What he did well there was call it early. You can see Vimsy backing away. Never took his eyes off the ball. And um, really good. It's Chris DeFreitas. I think it is. Who's taken a wonderful catch. Never easy when you have an awful lot of time to think about it. And does well. And LaRue perishes. And it's been, well, a very busy morning. And it's only got busier by the fall of the third wicket. And it is going to be Matt Pollard to continue from the St. John's end. He was a little bit expensive in that opening over. Riley Mudford took a little bit of a liking to him. How does he bounce back? Now uh, he does with a real beaut. A little bit of movement there. And uh, Mudford was uncomfortable. Oh, it's a super length to bowl at. The ball was raising, still rising as it went past the batsman. Mumford, well, he's looking for anything that's over pitched, really. His big hits so far have been straight back down the ground. But this occasion, Pollard brought the length back a bit, and the lack of footwork put Mumford in a little bit of difficulty. The new batter is the railway captain, Liam McCarthy. So left-hander, short ball, again, extra bounce, a real bounce out of this wicket. Looks a belter, looks like we're going to have a high-scoring day. Well, from what I've seen so far, I have to say, I think I'd rather be bowling on it than facing. <laughs> it's coming through at a good height when it's put in short, and there's good carry through to the keeper. It's certainly a track worthy of a semi-final, and in fact, as you said, later on at 4.30, one of these teams will be doing this all again in the final. Well, for whoever plays, whoever wins this game, they're going to play either the Hills or Marion. And both teams have long batting orders. You think of the Hills with Mark Donegan, Murray Cummins, likes to Nathan Rooney, Cormac McLaughlin, Gavin. Then you go to Marion with Jack Carty, Stephen Doheny, John Anderson. So plenty of batting for whoever wins this game to overcome in the final. Again, real lift from Pollard. McCarthy doing exactly the right thing. Just letting that one go by. As captain, he must be feeling the responsibility of all of those three wickets to have fallen so far. He's going to feel like he needs to go deep into this innings. And if himself and Mumford could stay together till at least the halfway mark, that would bring Railway right back into contention. And as I say, 50... Must be their first target. This one runs down to long leg. Well, that's gone for four. Real misfield. Well, that was some comment on the sideline. We didn't actually see from our position here, but uh, that one ran away, reached the boundary, and the score is moving on. Yeah, four leg boys just tripping off McCarthy. Um, just a poor misfield, not what Bob Brigham will want. Well, they've been good 
Uh, it's actually four runs, we're being told. Uh, a little bit of bat for Lee McCarthy, and he gets off the mark. So, not what Balbriga need, any misfields. Don't want to bring Rower Union back into the game. That one just dying on its way through. Well, that's the difference, bowling at the left-hander. Oh, Right-hander just angling him across McCarthy this time. Oh, there's the misfield. And the cry of anguish was well, well deserved. You'd expect him to field that 99 times out of 100. So change in the field. Slip comes out into mid-wicket. So Pollard's bowled a much better over here. Just going for five, but unlucky with the misfield. That's what a wicket can do. Just a couple of dots and put the pressure back on the railway batters. And a good end to the over from Pollard. So after five overs here in Pembroke, Railway Union have moved on for 42 for three. And we're going to have a change in the commentary box. We're going to hand you over to Mark Jones and Isabel Joyce. Thanks, guys. Morning, Izzy. Morning, Mark. What a day for finals day. How, lucky, how good is this? It's absolutely spectacular, isn't it? Sun shining. Barely a cloudless sky and set fair for the day as well, so... It was a funny one this morning, leaving and not feeling like you had to bring every single type of layer, just in case. Like, when it's warm at 10 in the morning, you're feeling pretty confident that it's not going get, to get chilly later on. Well, fingers crossed that's going to happen. Looks like we're going to have a change of bowling here. No, we're not. Big loss that first up. Kenny Carroll playing on first delivery. Yeah, it was an interesting first over, wasn't it? It nearly had everything. It had wicked first ball, sixth, third ball, wicked fifth ball. And uh, Bob Bob Brigham would have felt really much in the ascendancy then, but I think Railway have pulled it back a little bit now. They have. They've done well, actually, uh, because you can panic when you lose a couple of wickets in the first over. But they've run well. There have been a couple of mistakes in the field. Um, they're still taking the attack as well. And I think you know you can see Kevin O'Brien in their style of play. Just continue taking the bowling on. Beautifully driven, but well stopped by Kashif Ali in extra cover. All the fields are up on the offside. He's really there to hit, so he'll be disappointed he missed out there. It was. It's rare you get one in, in your own half, and that was seemed like a long half volley. Crunched it nicely, but straight at the fielder. Yeah, you're right. You can see the styles of both coaches coming through on the sides. As you say, Kevin O'Brien with Railway and Andre Botha with, uh, with Bob Riggan. Both attacking players in their day. Uh, he's found his length now anyway. Very nicely bowled. Can be tough as a left armour. Bowling to left-handed batters sometimes. You spend so much of your time practising against right-handers. Adjusting where you're landing or the release point can be difficult. Much like right-handers also don't like bowling to left-handers. <laughs> just left-handed cricketers in general are just awkward. <laughs> <laughs> we all need them though. Chance. Tight. Good understanding between these two. Yeah, it's quick call and they just went. Well, that's what you got to do, isn't it? Puts the fielder under pressure. They have to throw a little bit more quickly, let go of the ball more quickly and uh, makes it more difficult to hit the stumps. Direct hit would have been interesting, though, I think. Would have put umpire Clark under, under a bit of pressure there. And 
have to pull that one again. Samuel Will Willemsey. Mudford's been out there since the beginning. Looks like he's really got the pace of this wicket now. Dances down. Inside edge goes past 45. Didn't get much of it, so it'll just be the couple. But it's great to see the intent, though, isn't it? It is. It's, it's he's just changing the length. He's not letting Willemsey settle. Makes him think now. Does he have to bowl short? And perhaps um, Riley Mudford will stand still expecting a short one. It's such a game of cat and mouse. Oh, keeps his length. Good, smart bowling. It's the end of the power play. And again, very well run. One definite call. Both batsmen went. Putting pressure on the fielder. So power play, power play done and Balbriggan 44 for three. You do hear, 47 for three, excuse me. You do hear um, that old trope. I mean, it's been said for a long time. If you lose three in the power play, blah, blah, blah. Do you think that's gone now? It's, it used to be a stat a long time ago. You lose eighty percent of the games when you when you lose three inside it's the power play. It's just a difficult one to answer, and um, because normally it, it, it well, it, it certainly did hold water for such a long time. And I guess at international level, maybe not. But as as you come down to club cricket, though, it's it's probably still kind of prevalent as well that you know you're into the kind of the all rounders in a lot of in a lot of clubs. Um, but railway seem to have well, they've they've gone on the back of it now. And uh, 47 off six overs, obviously, which if you're, you'd won less wicket down, you'd be happy enough at the start. So, change of bowling. And Andrew Derrick to come in from St. John's End. And he'll have to bowl that again. Yeah, I think he's struggling for a bit, or striving for a bit of pace there, I think. <laughs> And has fired one down the down the leg side. Very much a loosener. Of course, this is one of two semi-finals taking place this morning. The other one in Marion Cricket Club between Marion and the Hills. The Hills won the toss and elected to bowl. Marion are 45 without loss at the end of the power play. So we'll keep an eye on that one. Helped along its way. He took the glove, but he got enough on it. That's four more to the total. Yeah, dug in short again. This time the shot was played and just about got over keeper Fletcher's head. Four runs down to long leg. He almost had a practice, didn't he? The first delivery. <laughs> it did, yeah. Almost a mirror this image. One got, this one got up a little bit higher, though. Do you have any interest in that Marion game is? No, it doesn't bother me who no, gets okay. through. <laughs> I'll remind you of that later on. Well, I, if they win, great, because my brother and my husband will get through to the final. If they lose, great, because then my husband can start looking after our kids again. So there's positives both ways for me. <laughs> it's a long game, cricket. You know, you need a lot of babysitters to cover the day. <laughs> Nine or ten hours a day, all right, yeah. It's not easy. Great feet, picks out the fielder. Well, obviously, he didn't seem too perturbed by the power on that shot. Nicely played. But as you say, straight to mid-off. Goes down as a dot. Probably opted for power rather than placement on that occasion. Yeah. Short helped on into the leg side and just about lifts it over the rope. That's a maximum. Very nicely played. As you say, just about cleared the field. Their body struck it reasonably well. It went pretty flat. Six more runs to the total. It's becoming a very productive over for Railway. 
It certainly is, and Mudford is looking in great touch. 40 from just 21 deliveries now. Two wickets falling early on, but they'll be glad, Railway, that he wasn't one of them. Absolutely. Another tight single. Bit of a muted appeal that time. Seemed to be sliding down leg and probably a bit high anyway. Not sure it had much going for it, did it? Didn't really, no. Just cleared the throat more than anything else. <laughs> so seven overs gone and Railway Union moving along nicely now. 58 for three. If you're just joining us, this is the LHK Insurance Alan Murray Cup T20 finals day. Two semi-finals this morning. This one that you're watching right now between Railway Union and Balbriggan. And then just down the road, Marion CC taking on the Hills. Whoever wins both of those games will play in the final later this afternoon. But uh, it's of course not the end of seven overs. There's still a couple of deliveries to come. Just the, well, one, but it was, it's turned into a couple because of that wide. Yeah, a couple of wides in the over. It's been, I think he's kind of struggled with his with his line with the left and right hand combination. Short, wide and punished. A very, very productive over indeed for Railway Union. Dark has gone the distance in that the first over outside the power play. And in fact, after seven, Railway Union are 63 for three. And a fantastic shot to end the over with as well. Short and wide outside the off stump and given the full treatment. Played beautifully on the up, didn't try and over hit it, just crunched it through uh, through point. Crunch is absolutely right. What a good score here is. Well, Pembroke is uh, lightning outfield. A beautiful sunny day, so it's uh, not going to change. And it looks a very good wicket, quite short straight. So I reckon, you know, 160 is probably par. What do you... What do you think, Mark? Yeah, I was talking to Andre both of there just became, before we came into the com box, and we kind of suggested that 180 might be par today, um, but we did revise down after two wickets in the first over, so I think Railway, at this stage, are probably looking for 200 with, this, with the, the start they have. It all, it all depends on the lower order batters and how, how they get on. Um, but I'll, I'll stick my neck out and go 185 would be a, would be a good score here. I think it's a grind that you're not too worried about any score under 200, as in you don't think it's unchaseable as a bowling team when you're bowling first. You obviously want to chase less, but on other grinds, if someone posts 180, 190, it seems a lot more daunting. Malahide, for example. Yeah, very much so. It's a, it's a ground that you're always in the game, and once, once you get one set batsman, um, it's, uh, they, they can score heavily very quickly. Short and pulled away well in front of the fielder in the deep so Mudford really enjoying his time out in the middle after a shaky start from Railway Union he's watching a couple of wickets fall down the other end but he stood strong yeah, he's really come into his milk now in the last three overs or so started to find his range find his timing come back he doesn't seem to have uh, any other gear other than fourth or fifth does he <laughs> <laughs> he lost his shape completely there didn't he just got it all wrong inside edge onto the luckily not the inside of the ankle which always used to annoy batter batters Dances down, has the width and decent work in extra cover by Christopher Freitas. It's a little, it can be difficult in that position because of the mat, so it's not an easy place to field in extra cover, although the placement of the wicket means that fielders aren't generally close enough in that they have to be on the mat. That's always the worst. I've always hated that as a player. 
dances down again and takes it on, takes it on all the way. High and handsome, six more. That's a magnificent shot. And that's brought up as 50 as well. Coming off 28 deliveries. Dance down there beautifully and absolutely spanked that one over. Um, wide long on. Cracking way to bring up your 50, is he? Absolutely. It didn't seem to perturb him at all that he was nearing his 50. Sometimes you can see players scratch around as they get singles to get to the milestone. Not much for it. Dances again. Wide of long on again. And his teammates are really enjoying this spectacle. Another maximum. Yeah, another very good over for Railway. Well, that closes out the eighth over. Let him see. Well, that last over really cost him in his figures. Four overs for him, 31 for 33. And that'll be his bowling effort done for this game. Railway Union, 80 for three. Yeah, he certainly went the distance in the last couple of overs. And 12 off the last two bowls always going to destroy anyone's figures, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, definitely doesn't help. I'll tell you what, Liam McCarthy is just doing so a great just job. He's not end. as bad at the Absolutely. other end, isn't he? When, whenever he's on strike, he just gets one, gets Mudford back on strike. Like, that's what you want in a partnership, isn't it? This Absolutely. Guy's, one guy's going really well, so just let him, let him face. I mean, that's the sign of a good number five because you're really not hoping not to be in until after 12 overs, I'd say, at number five. Yeah. So having that ability to be adaptable and you know be able to come in and hand strike over really early on in the piece, sign of a good batsman. One So Dylan Luce returns to the bowling crease. I have to say, it wasn't a great uh, delivery he bowled to get rid of Kenny Carroll. Looked on the short side, but poor shot selection. It was a long selection. hop, is. let's yeah. just call us, call us by the shovel here. <laughs> poor shot selection, should have gone out to the leg side, tried to play it, in, play it into the covers. Um, what I think he did, and he tried to cut it, didn't he? He was just... Yeah, that's what I'm he saying, he, yeah, he it just, on. He just, um, I think he just... The wrong line. Yeah. Wrong line. I'd be thinking about that one for a while if I know Kenny Carroll and I do. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, apologies for the, the moving picture. The, the camera is perched on top of the side screen down to St. John's Ed. So uh, you're going to see a bit of movement here, if not from the spinner or from the camera, if nothing else. <laughs> Short again. I'm not sure if he saw him coming. But uh, it was a good delivery in the end. I can pretty much guarantee that uh, Mudford's going to use his feet. Very much, but I like the way he just checked the shot there. He didn't, he didn't commit to it. You know, some, some, sometimes you go down, this is going, this is going. Oh, dear, I can't hit this one. But you still try and do it anyway. But he just checked it and bunted it down for a single. Could be two here. They run hard. Now the spinner will get there. I think they're going to take him on. Didn't quite hit it hard enough. Thought it went a bit further, yeah. Yeah. It's my old eyes, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting that you talk about Mudford checking his shot because it's something he didn't do against the seamers. He ran down and he threw everything at the ball. And uh, even regardless of whether he was there or not, maybe the lack of pace... Of least means that he's not willing to go through with the shot if he doesn't feel like he's in a good position. Yeah, I guess you feel as a batter if you're running at a at a seam bowl or if you get much on it, it's going to go somewhere. Um, and you kind of be unlucky unless it pops up. Whereas against the slower stuff... Reverse, gets it fine enough, beats the fielder in third. Good, clever cricket. And uh, he's getting in on the action here, Liam McCarthy. Four more. Yeah, very nicely played. Very nicely played. Didn't try and overhit it. Saw the gap down there and nearly rolled the wrist in reverse sweep, which is a very <laughs> difficult thing to do, but played very nicely. Well, he focused on placement. I think that was the key. He knew there was a third in place, so he needed to 
hit it fine. So he really focused on that bottom hand coming through and forcing it past the fielder in third. That's Farouk had to just watch it go past him and jog to the jog to the fence. Yeah, he nearly hit it when it was on the crease as opposed to in front of the crease. So as you say, he just helped along this way. Goes again. And Fru fine. Farouk had come a little bit finer this time as well. So he actually trying to hit that one a bit harder. So nine overs gone. Railway 88 for three now. Looking good for over 200. And you'd have to say 220 and the cards 230 if they continue like this because they'll want to accelerate even more. They will. They will. So it all depends on the lower order and also... A, if Mudford can stay there, and if and, and if another foil comes along on the line of McCarty. So under the change of bowling now, Owen Birch into the attack from the nursery end. Feels a long way from that first over. Two wickets Valbriggan took. They were a cock a hoop. Yeah, it's very easy to get overexcited as a fielding side if you if you get a couple of wickets or even one wicket. You know, you think you're on top all the way through, whereas sometimes you're not. And in this case, I, I would suggest that Railway are now comfortably on top. You know, you got two set batsmen. They're coming up towards a 50 partnership. But because of the mindset of you know you were so elated at the start, it's difficult to kind of lose that. Strong shot, picks the fielder again. Farouk in the firing line. Mudford doesn't seem to, or that was, yeah, Mudford's not slowing down anytime soon. Always difficult as a bowler, your first delivery and someone's running at you, <laughs> especially as a seamer. Correct, correct. Goes the slower delivery straight away. So that's T20 cricket for you folks. No time to settle. Straight into your work. Yeah, and kind of lucky to get away with that one as well. You know, ended up being a, a low full toss, which could have easily dispatched its way onto the uh, onto the railway tracks. Well, that's the problem with running down the wicket. You're assuming that you're, you know what pace the ball's going to be. So change-ups are very important against Mudford. We haven't really seen any. Up to stand still now. So that skill of Owen Birch of the slower delivery has forced Mudford to just pull back a little bit and stand still so he can watch the ball out of the hand a little bit more closely. Yeah, now it's a good start from Birch. Just a single off the first three deliveries. As McCarthy comes on the strike, we have Farouk coming back now to long on. His arms, his hands still stinging from the first delivery. Thin inside edge, that one will race away. Oh, good work in the deep. Excellent fielding to cut that one off. Yeah, good start from Birch again. Cramped the left-hander up for a bit of room there. And this is just what Balbriggan need. They needed someone to come on and slow things down. Yeah, the runs were flowing. Couple of quiet overs. If you can get out of this over without conceding a boundary, then he'll have done a fantastic job for his team. Maybe a cracking over. Just the four runs coming from it so far. Last delivery coming, last legal delivery coming up. And last delivery it is. Slipped off the legs. Just a single. Great over from Owen Birch. Just the five from it. Halfway through the first innings, Railway Union are motoring along 93 for three. And that's the 50 partnership as well between these two, McCarthy and Mudford. And with that, we have a change in the commentary box. Isabella Joyce has had enough of me. Sean Hussey has arrived. Hi, Huss. Hi, Mark. How's it going? Afternoon. Good oh, morning, good thanks. Oh, yeah, is it afternoon? Yeah, it is afternoon. You're right the first time. Well, what a start we've had. It's had a little bit of everything at the powerful batting of Riley Mudford, the real standout so far. You can see the worm. And a very steady rate 
So far out of the union. A couple of wickets in that opening over. With this partnership growing nicely for the fourth wicket. And Riley Mudford, the standout. Yeah, he's really good. Really, really good. Um, as all have around him were, lo were losing their heads, he, he kept his, but never stopped being positive. He's been, going, he's been going for his shots. He's ridden his luck a little bit with a few inside edges, but on the whole, I think he's, he struck the ball really nicely. <clears throat> kind of a change in bowling now. It's going to be Kashif Ali from the St. John's end, so another left armour. Yeah, they just seem to like the bowl to say the... The spinner in, in one block overs, like Dylan Lewis, that was a second over, but maybe he can only bowl if there's a one on the overs. So the keeper standing up to Kashif Ali. Been impressed with the real natural ball striking from Riley Mudford. The sound off the bat. Yeah, it's a lovely crunch, isn't it? It's what you want to hear. Like as a batter, it's what you want to, it's what you try and do every ball. Rarely happened, especially did in my career anyway. It was more the clunk of gloves or outside edges, inside edges with me. Oh, mine was the old death rattle. Stumps and bales flying everywhere. The reason me and Mark Jones are in the commentary box. Short ball down the ground from Liam McCarthy. Well, I've been really impressed. I've seen a little bit of him in the Interpros already this season for the Munster Reds. Looks like someone who's gone away and come back after a hard winter's work and looks a really outstanding player extra pace with the ball we're going to see later could be a real trump card for railway the captain Liam McCarthy yeah now he's played he's, he's played second fiddle as 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 Izzy alluded to earlier on well that is huge that is nearly back in railway union from Riley Mudford that is absolutely magnificent batting it's a short ball. It's not Kashif Ali's best delivery. Keeper up to the stumps. And Riley Mudford. Wow. That's nearly in the Irish Sea. Absolutely huge nudge. That's one where you need Wild Bill to go get that ball for you. I haven't seen him come in just yet. It might be a bit early for him yet. But uh, it's gone absolutely mild. Is he's just saying there he's in Merion. <laughs> But uh, absolutely cracking shot. Here we see in the replay here. A little bit short. Wasn't that short. But he just kept his shape and Pongo did over deep square leg for six runs. Yeah, just back to McCarthy there. He played he's, he's been playing second fiddle all the way through this uh, this innings. Um, you know, 19 or 15 deliveries. But uh, the running between the wickets has been really good. He's he's tried his best to get Mudford on strike. He's recognized that Mudford has been the dominant. Um, batter in the partnership and he just let him at it which it is a, it's a very difficult thing to do especially as a, as a top order batter because you want to be the one scoring the runs you want to be the one dominating and dominating Riley Mudford is that's his outstanding hitting well if you're in the area get down because the second innings Balbriggan may well be chasing a big total and they have the firepower Connor Fletcher magnificent century to get them into the semi-final. Greg Ford as well. And he goes again. And a good field. That's really good work from the big fast bowler, Matt Pollard. Saves a certain boundary. Yeah, that's a fantastic one-handed diving stop. Down at uh, 45. Yeah, just what you need. Kashif Ali, he's already been hit for that big six. And his big fast bowling, fast bowler, Pollard, gets down and is an important piece of work. Chance of a direct hit. Oh, and I think Liam McCarthy had almost given up the ghost. So that's a couple of times where I haven't been, or been letting Balbriggan players have a free throw at the stumps, unable to get the run out yet, Balbriggan, but a chance there. Yeah, there was a chance, but you're always, you know, you just see on the replay here, of a very good stop. Um, but yeah, they, but, They'd be positive running between the wickets, which is what you want in a T20. Um, you're you're always going to give away that that chance if uh, if you are running hard and taking the odd risk. And remember, this this is this is club cricket as well, so it's going to be, you know, it's it's rare that you get you get run out in a direct hit. Oh well, Kashif Ali's opening over goes to for 11. 11 overs have gone here in Pembroke and Railway Union are 104 for three. So a reminder, the winner. 
the winners of this game between Railway Union and Balbriggan will play the winners of the other semi-final which has taken place in Anglesey Road. Stephen Doheny has gone to a half century so his good form continues and Marion are 99 for 1 in the 12th over so that looks like it's going to be another very close game but Stephen Doheny in good form after being left out of the 50 over World Cup qualifier squad and maybe just a little nudge to Irish selectors that he's capable so as a reminder Marion are 100 for 1 after 12 overs yeah it's been a very missed week for Dotsie he's you know, he got 70 odd in the Interpro as well on Thursday I think and another 50 here today he's a fine player and like, he was with the Irish squad all over the winter so I was a little bit surprised when I didn't see his name on the uh, on the squad list um, for the World Cup qualifiers High in the air, and it's a chance. Is it? Can Farouk get there? Oh, he can't. Straight through the hands. So, Riley Mudford, that's probably one of the first times today he hasn't timed it that well. And oh, it was a chance, Farouk. Difficult one from running back. We saw a brilliant catch from Darak earlier. And this time, Farouk just can't quite get there. What but it's good a, from Birch. Would have been a very good take, to be fair. And this time it's coming straight over our heads. What a shot that is from Riley Mudford. This is outstanding batting. This just looks a class above uh, Balbriggan at the moment. Well, they've no answer for it. Yeah, long half volley this time for Birch. Unfortunately, he was bowled really well and it's been absolutely spanked over, over long all for six. Very flat, didn't get much height on that. It was like a stinger shot they call in golf. But he's, he's, he's hit that really, really nicely again. Moves on to 77 now, or 40 deliveries. Well, there'll be people taking note of this innings from Riley Mudford. Anytime you play a rally this year, you'll be keeping an eye out for this. And he goes again. It's a no ball. It's going to bounce short of Farouk. Oh, I'm sure Riley Mudford would have wanted the free hit. But they're under real pressure, Balbri. And after getting that open, couple of wickets in the opening over, particularly off the first ball, the experienced Kenny Carroll, falling and Punra Meha falling but it's been the Riley Mudford show it's going to be a free hit here for Liam McCarthy yeah but the field can change has been a change of batter shoot, shoot. and as often happens on a free hit swept out to deep square the catch is taken and they just walk through for a single and everyone just moves on as if nothing had happened well at least no one celebrated because that's often when you can find the people who aren't paying attention when someone yells in celebration I wonder where Owen Birch tries to bowl to Riley Mudford because if he pitches it up well Mudford will hit him back over his head again short ball oh and very nearly dragged on we saw Kenny Carroll fall in similar fashion and Mudford just wearing that one. Looks like he's rubbing his six back there, just to indicate that it didn't hurt him. But yeah, in fairness to Birch, he's trying his best to mix it up every delivery here. He bowled a really good first over, and now he's under pressure in the second over, but he's come back well after that, after that six. Goes again. And all the way for six. Well, this is as clean a hitting as you'll see. It's a joy to watch. He's a class above Riley Mudford. And he, at the moment, is giving Railway Union a real chance. Outstanding again. Yeah, very nice he played. He didn't try and overhit that. He might have even just come off the thick inside edge. But it's flown all the way in the short, the short straight boundaries here at Pembroke for six more runs. Been a very expensive over thus far. And he moves to 84 from 43. Four fours and eight sixes. Nearly striking at 200. So this is wonderful stuff from Mudford. And he plays that into the offside, so he'll keep the strike. So Owen Birch, that was a little bit more expensive for him. A couple of sixes in that over. He's not for 23 after two overs. You can see some of the... This was the chance for Farouk after 12 overs. It's 122 for three. This may well have been their best chance of getting them out so far. Yeah, probably the key moment of the game so far was certainly from after the first over. Popped up. It would have been a very good catch. But unfortunately, Farouk couldn't, just couldn't come, quite come back to it. And then, as you see here, the very next ball, it's, it's dispatched over long all for six. Straight over, producer Walsh's head. <laughs> now we are going to see Kashif Valley continue. 
Uh, I'm sure Riley Mudford will be targeting leg side towards the wall here in Pembroke. Good crowd coming in. And I'm sure there'll be a few people hoping to get down a little bit sooner than planned to watch Riley Mudford in full flow. And he goes again. And this is six more. This is incredible hitting from Riley Mudford. Nine sixes now. Moves into the 90s. And what do Balbriggan do? Well, they're all searching around. No one has answers because at the moment, Riley Mudford is putting on a clinic and he moves into the 90s. I'm surprised at this stage that the spinner has only bowled two, uh, two overs. You know, he starts off with two in the first over and then an endless one on the 10th over, which didn't go for that many either as far as my memory is concerned. Um, they have to do something to try and stem the the onslaught here and obviously getting one for it out will be key on their list of priorities oh it goes again slow up all and missed by Connor Fletcher so good change up that from Kashif Ali and given a bye by umpire Willie Clark but we saw immediately despite the wicket of Kenny Carroll in the opening over Riley Mudford played a shot down over Long On's head who was out into the nets in that opening over so marked his intent right away and he's just kept it going and now striking nearly at 200 and into the 90s and McCarthy is just playing a good hand here getting Carroll or getting Mudford back onto strike yeah it's easy to underestimate the role that McCarthy is playing in this innings he's 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 just uh, as I probably laboured the point this far, he's, he's he's just played second fiddle and been happy to play second fiddle. Yeah, got Mudford on strike. Goes again, and he'll get a boundary this time. Well, Riley Mudford's the overseas pro for railway, and he's delivering for his side. This is outstanding. This could well be a century on cup final day here in the semi-final between Railway and Val Briggan and at the moment it's the Riley Mudford show uh, it's, been, it's been some exhibition of batting thus far looks like they've lost the ball temporarily hopefully one of the Val Briggan guys heads behind the signage over there well, it doesn't matter what ball Val Briggan are bowling to Riley Mudford it just seems to be disappearing in waves Railway Union are on for a big score. Well, we did say, I said a little bit earlier with Craig Senior, maybe in excess of 165. Now it looks that when Mudford can Railway get in excess of 200. See him chatting there with Connor Fletcher on the screen. Connor Fletcher with a wonderful century to get Balbriggan into this semi final. He'll have a part to play with the bat. Now, Mudford, just one blow away from a memorable century. Beautiful Not shot. Old, but very nicely played through the covers. Uh, great work in the deep. I think it's Greg Ford out there who saves a couple of runs. But well balled from Kashif Ali, but Rutford's still able to get a couple of runs. Yeah, he went for the Yorker, went for the wide Yorker and nearly pulled it off. But Mudford was able to get under it and get enough on it to get it through for a, for a well-stopped boundary by Greg Ford in the deep. You can see on your screen there, Mudford now 97, 48 deliveries. And there it is. What a century, what a moment for Riley Mudford. Take a bow, and the helmet comes off, and all of Pembroke rises to their feet because they've seen a clinic. This has been exceptional, a joy to watch, and it could well be the difference, and could well lead Railway into a cup final. But Riley Mudford take about six fours, nine sixes, striking at over 200, and the century coming off 49 deliveries. Outstanding from Riley Mudford. Yeah, it only feels like a couple of moments ago we were applauding his 50, and now some maybe 15 deliveries later we're, we're applauding a magnificent hunt century from Riley Mudford. He's batted about really, really well. He's been positive all the way through, despite the those three wickets going down very quickly in the at the, at the opening part of the innings. And has now really set a fantastic platform for Railway to kick on here and go comfortably over 200. Like we're 140 now after after 12 overs. All right, 13 overs, and there's seven wickets still on the hutch. Yeah, and just think back to that chance that Farouk had off the bowling of Owen Merch, the start of that 11th over. And Riley Mudford 
skied one up in the air and Farouk just in the end went through his hand so he couldn't grasp it that was on 69 now Riley Mudford on 101 and a memorable moment for him a special day and he'll want to turn it into an appearance at a cup final I have my wish in the spinners back us could well be a little bit too late and a chance for Kashif Ali oh and he's dropped it and it was a very difficult chance moving around to his left it was Lee McCarthy this time but having made the ground having got a hand on it looks like he might have hurt himself yeah, that was hit very, very hard into the deep. And Kashif Ali made a very good, very valiant effort for it. I think, by well, looks, things might have caught it on the thumb. Would have been a very good grab. Well, the highest innings we've seen in this LHK group, Alan Murray Cup this year, was 102 from Connor Fletcher. And we mentioned that got Babrigan into this position, Riley Mudford now on 101. You can see how difficult a chance that was for Kashif Ali. Looks like he's hurt himself down in front of us. And he might get a, need need a little bit of spray to ease the pain. Yeah, I think we'll have a little bit of a delay here as he gets a bit of attention. It was a good effort, but it was hit with such power and ferocity that if it doesn't go straight into the hands, it's going to hurt. Yeah, just a quick delay, but the morning's been lit up by Riley Mudford. Nine sixes and six fours. And some of the power hitting we've seen, well, it's been a joy to watch. And if Railway do get to the final, Mark Jones, I think we might see a lot of people come down for an afternoon's watch to see if Mudford can repeat the dose. As you can see, the bowler's used, Dylan Louise, being the standout with two wickets. He's on now, bowling to the dangerous Mudford. And Mark Jones has his wish, spinners on. straight away a dot hus. I think we missed a 100 partnership there as well between the two of them. They came together when the score was in 37. Yeah, well, Lee McCarthy on 23. It just shows you the dominance of Mudford, but he's played well, McCarthy. And again, good bowling from Dylan Weas. He's a canny operator. And he seems to be causing a few issues for Riley Mudford. The pace on the ball seems to be suiting the big Kiwi. Oh, there it is, the caught behind, brilliant bowling from Dylan Louise, just held back his length, Riley Mudford, century, has to go, and Mark Jones, well, he called it, needed to get the spin back on, and a big wicket, a huge wicket for Bal Brigham, but what a special innings from Riley Mudford, nine sixes, oh, century in the cup semi-final, and just an innings to remember. Yeah, fantastic innings from Mudford, you just see here in the replay, was well bowled by uh, by Dylan Louise. Went to try and spank that one out of the ground. Thickish enough edge and a good and a fine catch behind the stones from from Fletcher. To be fair, you know any, and anything over waist height is always difficult when you're standing up. But he took that well and and Mudford's getting a, a fantastic ovation as he leaves the pitch here today. Fantastic innings and has really set a fine platform now for Ray to kick on here and and go over 200. Yeah, special innings from Riley Mudford. And one to remember for him and for the many people watching here in Pembroke. And will we see him bat again today? Will Railway Union find our way into the LH group? Alan Murray Cup final later. Marion and the Hills is the other semi-final taking place just up the road from us on Anglesey Road. And I can give you the score update that in the 16th over, Marion are 124 for two. So I'm sure they'll be looking to get the foot on the accelerator. Brandon Kruger, new man to the crease of the Munster Reds. So these two have played a lot of cricket together. Teammates at interprovincial level. And it'll be interesting to see what way Liam McCarthy goes about business now. Can Paul Brigham just stem the, the flow of runs? Yeah, nicely played. Um, I think everyone's going to need to calm down for a couple of minutes now after after the fine display from Munford. You know, we might go back to a bit of normal normalised cricket for for two or three overs. Um, as you say now, it's, a, it, it's whether Lee McCarthy can can step up to the plate to become the dominant uh, the dominant one in, in in the next partnership here with Kruger. 
in the air. And he might get away with it, Liam McCarthy. In fact, he does. But Dylan Louise is causing all problems. What an over. The wicket, the big wicket of Mudford. Just three runs coming from it. And after 14 overs, Rowe Union are 142, uh, 43 for four. But wonderful bowling. Yeah, he really tossed that last one up. Tempted McCarthy to in, in, into the full stroke, which he topped out, but was lucky enough to get away with it there, Hus. Yeah, so a big last six overs or so especially after the fireworks of Riley Mudford. We're going to have a change of bowling. Looks like it's going to be Farouk Nazar to come on. So from the St. John's end. I think you're right. I think everyone just needs to take a second and... Take a breath. Just yeah. take a breath, us. But it was an outstanding innings from Riley Mudford. And he's put Rowie in a really good position now. Can they take it full advantage? This is where they'll be a little bit disappointed. They lost a couple of cheap wickets early. <coughs> Kenny Carroll was unlucky, dragging on off his ball, ricocheting off his right foot onto the stumps. Oh, a little bit more spin. Yeah, I'm surprised it's taken this long to bring bring a second spinner into the attack. You know, the medium pace, medium medium fast uh, bowlers have have gone the distance all in the first 14 overs or so. Now I know it's a good wicket, but you know, pace off the ball is always key as well, especially on a good wicket with a fast outfield. But you never know. A couple a couple of quick wickets here now, and it, the game could turn very quickly towards in, in Bob Riggins' favour. Well, one thing that the Balbriggan fielders out there, particularly some of their star batters, Greg Ford, Connor Fletcher and Co, will be thinking this looks a good wicket. Good bounce we've seen from the fast bowlers. Yeah, very much so. And it's, it's, a, it's up to the railway batters now to keep the momentum going and make sure they do reach 200 from here. They're in a fantastic position to do so, obviously. Goes for the reverse sweep, had to wait for it. And out to the field or a deep cover. So no real pace to work with from Nasir, from Farouk. Yeah, I think you're right. Onus on Lee McCarthy and Brandon Kruger now. Can Railway get to that 200? A huge psychological plus for them. Uh, they really feel like they haven't capitalised if they don't after the brilliance of Mudford. I see another mid, another misfield there at mid wicket. Bit of a mixed bag with uh, with the Bob Brigan fielding today. We've seen some fine catches and we've also seen some, I'll say, average ground fielding. A couple of balls going through hands and a couple of drop catches as well. Played into the leg side. Uh, chance of a two. It's a big boundary out there. And uh, really good running from this pair. I think that's what they might have to do for the next hour or so if the boundary option dries up. Yeah, we'll pace off the ball. If you can't get it over the rope or to the rope, at least run hard between the wickets. But it's been a fine over from Farouk Nazir so far. Six runs coming from it. If he can get out of it, it'd be really good. In the air, is it a chance? It is, and you can hear Liam McCarthy let out a roar of anguish. Two quick wickets for Al Brigan, and they're well back into this game. That's the fifth wicket to fall. And Liam McCarthy will be a little bit disappointed, but Farouk gets, an, gets his first wicket in his opening over, and spin seems to be working. Uh, at 15 overs gone, and Rowe Union are 150 for five. And I'll pass you over to Isabel Joyce and Craig Senior. Thank you, Sean and Mark, for those insights. Interesting time for the two set batters to be back in the hutch. Liam McCarthy, the latest to go for 28. This is what sent him back. Just tried to hit it too hard. Sent it down the ground. Settles himself underneath it. And a good catch in the deep. So, Belbriggan have an opportunity now. Five overs to go to try and contain this railway union batting attack. 
Well, this, this innings has swung Balbriggan's way, Railway's way. And now is it swinging back to Balbriggan? That century, Mumford, absolutely vital. Railway lost a couple of early wickets, two in the first over. But they rebuilt and they're now one four nine for four going into these last five overs. As our previous commentators said, they'll be looking for 200 plus. Well, Kruger, he's got hold of that one, added four more to the total, and that brings up 150 for Railway Union. After 15.1. Hasn't taken Kruger too long to go about his business. Short and just helped out to square leg. Well, he was looking for a bigger hit than that, but he found the man out on the boundary. Ball rolling slowly out to him, but another one onto the total. So Husher Sultan joins Kruger out in the middle. Well, every time Luce has come on, he's been very effective. Three wickets for him. Obviously those first two wickets in the first over. Kenny Carroll, such a talisman for Railway Union, was sent back in the first ball of the game. He's mixing up his line and his length well. He's getting a good bit of bounce down at that end. And he's taken wickets at both ends of the ground. Started off opening from the, Will, uh, from the St. John's end, taking those two wickets in the first over. Oh, that's a big hit. Good work in the deep. It draws a few right laughs from Owen Birch. To freight us the other fielder down there. That's so fine work from the six wicket falls. Well, all seems a bit quiet and subdued out there now as we enter this vital stage for both teams. Kruger will be looking to push on from here. Member of the Re Munster Red Squad. But I think Railway will be delighted, having lost those two wickets in one over, to have reached 150 in the 15th, 16th over. Here's that wicket. It looked like it was going for all money all the way. De Freitas has to catch it over his shoulder, and that... I can tell you, is extremely difficult to be running backwards at all to kick a catch, let alone one that's gone that high. And that close to the boundary. Exactly, going half into a thought, the tents. Half so. a thought must have been towards standing on the rope. Unsurprisingly, Lou's continuing. He's going to finish out his four overs then, four for 24. Just what you want in a semi-final. Incredible figures from the off spinner. That's been the trajectory. It's, you want to see how quickly it inclines. It's quite a steep incline for a worm, up to 160. I think they'll pass that with ease, but it's how many more that they can get. And we were discussing, Craig, earlier, what we thought a par score or a winning score would be out here in Pembroke today. Any thoughts? Well, Sean and our first stint together today was mentioning a figure of 165. Well, that's going to be under par. Certainly under where railway are going to want to be. Farouk Nasser continuing from the St. John's end and uh, it's Fakhar Zaman who's going to face up now. He's joined Brendan Kruger out in the middle. Well, that 200 total 
still must be on the minds of the railway supporters and team. Goes big chance now again. The wickets are tumbling for Railway Union. It's a bit of a procession now. And Zaman can't add to the total. Balbriggan are hammering home their advantage after a really amazing middle period for Railway Union. They're folding somewhat come the end of their innings. 155 for six now. Well, with every wicket that falls, Balbriggan will feel that par figure coming down. And they'll be hoping now, certainly, to keep Railway under 200. And in fact, they may even be thinking 190. Certainly down to the lower order batsman now. Kruger's just sort of been stranded out there at the non striker's end, watching a couple of wickets falling. Well, it's really poor batting because Kruger's out there. He's he's looked pretty. He's looked good. He's looked set as a batsman coming out to join him. Number nine coming in. You've you've got to think. Hand the strike over. Why are, why are the number eight and nine looking to score boundaries when they have? Kruger, number six, out there with them. That's better. Get off strike. Well played. Well, Kruger was well alive to the situation. He knows he wants to be down the striker's end. And once the ball went round the corner, he was charging down the wicket. Yes, Alan Joseph Matthew did well. Got off strike, handed it over to his senior partner. Really will want a, uh, Kruger to face as many of these deliveries as possible. Well, Bell Brigham may have found the secret of success here, and it's taking pace off the ball. I don't know how much turn there is out there, but certainly the spinners are the ones causing the difficulty for railway. I think it's just their natural ability to change things up. Spinners tend to have a few more change-ups and pace up their sleeves. That's 17 overs gone in Railway Union, 157 for seven now. Well, 157 for seven does show how important that Manford knock was. There's the bowling figure so far, and Dylan Lewis, <coughs> well, he's going to be delighted with four for 24. The other wicket-takers then. Wilms, Wilms a one for 33. And that's all two for nine from his two. Why wasn't he on earlier? Have a look at those fall of wickets there. Third wicket went when the score was on 37, and then it was an onslaught from the bat almost entirely from of Riley Mudford. Incredible century from him. So himself and Liam McCarthy put on just over 100, but then those two fell in quick succession, and it's really been the story since then. Well, the return to pace was Pollard, but taking two. Brilliant running. And that has been a feature of this railway innings, as well as the massive sixes we've seen, most of them coming from Mumford's bat. They've been good at taking their singles. They have. They've had good, good understanding. It feels like something that they've focused on. And they, they do have Kevin O'Brien as their coach, who presumably has spoken to them about understanding when you can take singles. Good placement from Kruger. They'll look to come back for a second, but De Freit is probably the best fielder on the pitch right now. So important as a captain to have your best fielders in the right places. So it's Hamza Mann, in fact, is in at number nine. Not Matthew, as we previously had thought. So apologies for that. Pollard continuing from the nursery end. In the air and easily taken. Yet another one falls for Railway Union. Brandon Kruger must be wondering if he's going to be left out there stranded at this stage. Man, 
just did not get any of that easy catch in point and man goes for one. Well, it was well bowled by Pollard. He saw the batsman was going to come down the track to him and just dropped it a little shorter. And that caused the ball to squirt up into the air out towards the point area where a simple catch was taken. Another wicket fell. That's eight down now. 160 for eight. In this, the 18th over. And as you say, it's been a procession since Mumford departed the scene for 101. Sean Hussey's guess of 165. Well, it could be that it's closer to that than we thought it would be. Well, I thought par is probably 170, 180, so at the moment they're below par. Um, which you wouldn't have thought was possible a couple of overs ago. It's going to be Alan Joseph Matthew now coming out at number 10. Still plenty of overs to go, so I hope someone has said to him, look, hand the strike over to Kruger and, and let him try and score the boundaries. You just need to stay there with him. and Plenty of singles on offer. Yeah, what you want from your tail enders at this stage, especially with Kruger still there, is you want them to have a strike rate of 100, which is just every time they face, they get down the other end and put Kruger back on strike. Yes, if they're to reach a, a bigger score, shall we say, it's going to come down to Kruger. Gets off strike now with one delivery left in the over. So Kruger now has a decision to make. Does he try and score a boundary or does he <laughs> get himself on strike for the penultimate over? I think I'd be taking the single if I'm honest. I wouldn't be trusting my partners having watched all the wickets fall around me. And this is where the, the cricketing brain comes in. A couple of changes in the field. They recognise Valbriggan that the main threat is Kruger, so mid-wicket goes out. No one saving the single in front of square on the leg side. Cover is up, though. Well, so. with the moving of that fielder, it makes the single so much easier for Kruger to make sure he's facing the start of the next over. 18 gone. 6-1 for 8 and it's those wickets that have really put the brakes on here for Railway. At one stage they were going at, well, nearly 11, 12 and over. There's the card so far. Well, what a contrast. Kenny Carroll out first ball, dragging one onto his foot and onto the stumps and Mudford, well, he scored 101 off 52 balls, 49 to get to his century. And after that, it's pretty much a procession. McCarthy did provide Mudford with some support. But other than that, well, too many noughts and ones on that card, really. So Nazar continues. Kruger, all he can do is get a single. If they look to get a single off every delivery in the final two overs they'll get up to that par score close or close enough you'd have to imagine that you know they'll, they'll manage to get a one or two boundaries away in the remaining 11 rather than try and hit every ball for four and get caught it might be better to to just take their ones and twos up until the final three or four deliveries well you can't see from this shot here but the only fielders on the leg side are on the boundary except for one He's just around the corner, just while well, he's there. And he's <laughs> rammed it straight to him. Could not have directed it better. Well, Alan Joseph Matthew. Brandon Kruger throws his head to the, th the sky. Can't quite believe it. Well, there was about three or four acres of room out there, and he managed to pick out the one fielder. We were saying that all they needed to do was push it into that side. They could have taken ones and twos there and got themselves up to 180 or so. He tried to ramp it over that player, but instead he got so little of it that the fielder actually had to come in four or five yards to take the catch. Yeah, directed around and there was a bit of work to be done in the field by Kashif Ali. Made good ground, but one of the easier catches that you'll take. 
Certainly easier than the one he tried to take in front of us during the middle part of the game where he managed to jam his finger into the ground. He required some ice and some spray. He seems a bit happier now anyway. So Sean O'Brien comes out at number 11. I think we can see he's going to try and get off strike. I think we're finally going to have a batter who's ha happy to hand over to his senior partner. Maybe not, dancing down. Well, he's taking a couple of steps, but he's covering covering the spin and making sure he's still there. I mean, this is the 19th over, but you see no wickets in hand now. One more falls and that's the end of the innings. Brian just trying to play away for the single. Well, they knew that was the final ball. Certainly didn't want a single there. And that leaves Kruger on strike for the final over. But the score not really moving on there. 163 for nine is well below what railway would have been looking at at about, well, they were at 150 in the 15.1 over. And you can see all the big Manhattan tower blocks in the middle of the innings. Yeah, have a look later on there. There's a few very below part Manhattans late on in the innings, which is not what we're used to seeing. So Pollard will close out from the nursery end. Good change up. Kruger is not taking any singles. <laughs> no. No, this is all or nothing time. Yeah. Just down the road to keep you informed, Marion, who batted first, closed out on 166 for six in their 20 overs. Well, these games have been quite similar, uh, both starting at the same time. That Marion game up the road on Anglesey Road. This game here. 163 for nine here. 166 is the total up in Merion. He's going to try and push for two, but they won't get back. Birch does the work out in the deep. And it's time for Sean O'Brien. This is the stage when you don't mind your 8, 9, 10, 11 looking to get the ball over the rope. Well, again, will it be O'Brien just going for the, the big hit or with... Four balls left in the over. Surely he's got to look to get Kruger back on. That involves getting bat on ball. Oh, a well directed bouncer and well played by young O'Brien in the end. Yes, he did well just to get out of the way of that one. But well bowled by Pollard too. He just wants to keep O'Brien down that end. He knows how important it is to keep Kruger leaning on his back next to the umpire at the non-striker's end. It's a far cry from when bowlers used to be nice to other bowlers. <laughs> <laughs> Remember those days? No bouncers at fast bowlers. Those days are long gone. A handy little edge from O'Brien. Just manages to get the single. Should have got enough on it to prevent it going any further, but mission accomplished for O'Brien. He gets down to the non striker's end. There are two balls remaining, and one gets the feeling one might see, uh, yep, one might see, well, Kruger putting his back out here. <laughs> He's only got one thought on his mind here, and that's a big shot. Oh, that got the fleshy part of the thigh. Never where you want to get it. It's been a good comeback from Pollard. He was loose early on in his spell, but he's bowled well at the death here. Well, I think any bowler would have struggled against Mumford today. Was that right? I heard the second 50 was in 15 balls. 
I heard that too. It Incredible. Was especially quick. But he was on such form. She steps down, sends it high, sends it long. Chance in the deep. Nope. It goes over the head of Birch. That's a handy little pickup shot from Brandon Kruger to close out the first innings of this, the LHK Insurance Alan Murray T20 finals day. It's the semi final in Pembroke Wanderers Railway Union. They were sent in to bat by Balbriggan and they've amassed 171 runs for the last of nine wickets. This was the shot that had the right length. Finally, Kruger manages to send his bat through one. He would have been wor worrying for a few moments, but just about got enough on it to get the maximum. Well, there was certainly no wasted effort there. It did, did just what it needed to to get over the fielder. Well, there's the railway card. Well, 8.6 and over. But Riley Mudford, well, that was a fine knock. 101 from 52 balls. And in support, well, Liam McCarthy and himself, well, they put on 104. But once those two departed quickly together, poor old Brandon Kruger, he came in at number six and then watched four wickets falling down the other end. And finally, Railway will feel that they've, well, not reached the heights they would have wanted to. I think if you'd asked them at the end of the first over, would you like 171 runs, they would have taken it with both hands. Dylan Luce, he was fantastic today. Two wickets in the first over for him. Closes out with four, four wickets for 24 from his allotment. Nasser will be wondering what he did on the captain not to get his fourth over. Three for nine for him. And the other wicket takers, Willemsey and Pollard. So... We have a great game on our hands. It's about a par score. Railway Union post 171. Lots of wickets at the end. You can see those dots on your screen. That's what stunted the growth of that worm. It was looking like it was on course for 190, 200, but good bowling in the end from Balbriggan keeps them to 171. Join us again in a couple of moments' time for the second innings.
It's all good, yeah? I, I didn't want to disturb you. I came to ask you that.
As the umpires make their way back out to the middle, there's the match summary so far. Well, that 171 for nine from Rower Union, and all thanks really to Riley Mudford, who was absolutely outstanding, hitting nine sixes in his 49 ball century, and in the end, 101 off 52. And Brendan Kruger with a very important 21 not out at the end to get Rower Union up to over 170 where at one stage it looked like 200 Sean Hussey here delighted to say we're bringing you the Cricket Leinster LHK finals day this is one of the semi-finals taking place the final will be on around half four later and Marion in the other semi-final up the road made 166 for six we believe think a few runs below par and the Hills are 10 for loss after the opening over so second innings underway on Anglesey Road and the second innings very shortly going to get underway here at Sydney Parade Sean Hussey to joined by Craig Senior Craig very eventful opening 20 overs but Riley Mudford the real standout with a wonderful century well it was the most excellent innings it started off Balbriggan's way with wicket first ball and the danger man Kenny Carroll on his way back to the shed another wicket in that first over and at that stage I think if you'd offered Railway 171, they'd have taken it. <clears throat> but then, a superb batting by Riley Modford. Well, we're going to have the captain for Railway Union, Liam McCarthy, with excess pace, is going to open the bowling. And it's going to be Connor Fletcher and Farouk Nazar, who is on strike. Well, McCarthy was appearing in the Interprovincials last week. He bowled very well. He'll be looking to replicate that sort of form here again in Sydney Parade. The important thing here for this game, Val Brigham have only lost nine wickets in winning those four group games that got them through to the semi-final. And a short ball and a wide ball to start the second innings. But he has got a little bit of pace Lee McCarthy seems to have found an extra yard after a winter of work and he's got a slip in place. And he's bowling to kind of flex sure it is on strike. Wonderful century from him earlier in the competition in the last round to get Paul Brigham through and over the line against Clontarf and into this LHK on a Murray semi final. Can he get a side into the final? Another wide. Although an appeal. Was the appeal for a catch or an appeal for a not a wide? I will leave that one in their hands. But umpire Willie Clark unmoved and uh, gives it a wide. So a poor start from McCarthy. And he's just going a little bit too short. He's got a slip in place. I so shouldn't be afraid to look to get a fuller. Again, short. And a chance for a run out. Direct hit. Oh, and it is. It's brilliant. Oh, but Azam Ali begs as he's got back. Oh, for all the money, it looked like a sensational piece of fielding from Sean O'Brien. In the end, it was, but to no avail. And umpire Azam Ali Beg with the best view in the house, says it's not out. But what a start that would have been for our Union. Well, there was a wicket with the first ball of the Rowa Union innings, and there was nearly a wicket with the first legitimate delivery of the Balbriggan innings. But Conor Fletcher gets off the mark. Well, he was awkward for Fletcher there. He just played it one hand off the bat. And that is very close. But as you say, the umpire said he was home. And now he'll face his first delivery from McCarthy. Short ball and an immediately a boundary for Farouk Nazar. Just beats the dive of Sean O'Brien. And Balbriggan are certainly going to look to score heavy in the opening overs, but not the best start from Liam McCarthy. He'll be disappointed with that. His line at the moment, just too much to the leg stump. And that's enabling the batsman to get inside and play it round the corner. Ball stuck in a hedge at the moment. That's the slight delay. But yes, uh, these deliveries just too much on the body of the batsman, allowing him to play away, and that's a fine shot. Beating the despairing dive of young O'Brien. The hedge gives up the ball at last. 
This is starting to look like a good over for Balbriggan to get them off, up and running. So the first boundary of the Balbriggan innings. Well, again, short, but it's a ball from McCarthy. Gets it in tight to Farouk. Nazar doesn't allow him to free his arms. It looks like this is a definite plan from McCarthy to cramp the batsmen and not let them free their arms at anything outside off. If he wants to bring that slip into play, he's going to have to pitch it up a bit more. But at the moment, he's just trying to stop the batsman getting a full swing at anything. Again, good bounce. Uh, this time well run from Liam McCarthy's bowling. Again, angling it in uh, for Nazar, not giving him any room. So this is the, one of the semi-finals taking place. The other one, as I said, up Anglesey Road, Marion and the Hills. And the Hills are off to a really good start there, chasing 166, 28 for none after two overs. So it could well be an off fingal affair in the final. I'm sure the two Southside clubs, Rowley Union and Marion, I want to have something to say about that. Again, good ball, a big appeal. Umpire Willie Clark immediately walks out of line. Better for McCarthy when he pitches it up. And that is a late boy, so no bat involved. Uh, again, and a very interesting opening over with a little bit of everything. Not yet a wick. Well, on this occasion, McCarthy did l lengthen his delivery. And it, again, causing Farouk a little bit of problems. He managed to get pad to it. And Willie Clark was very quick at turning down any appeal there. Can he find the breakthrough with the final delivery of the opening over? McCarthy. Uh, well stared down from Farouk Nazir. Down to the third man boundary. So it will be 10 runs from the opening over of the second innings. A reminder about Brigham need 172 for nine. There's that appeal. Looks to be too much movement. And after one over, it's 10 without loss. A little bit of shape in for Lee McCarthy, certainly when he pitched that one up. And that's what he needs. He, he's explored the middle of the pitch and he's managed to get some good bounce from it. But those ones that he's pitching up, well, it does invite the drive. And there may be the danger of dropping one into the slot and letting the batsman free his arms through it. But McCarthy, well, 10 came off that over. But it wasn't the most comfortable over for the openers to negotiate. It's going to be Alan Joseph Matthews, Matthews to uh, bowl from this, the nursery end. So I think it's... Uh, Clever from our union. They saw in the first innings that spin was the only real defence on this wicket. Pace bowling seemed to go the distance, but it was the spin of Dylan Louise and Farouk Nazar himself that sort of clawed the momentum and got the big wicket. Louise of Riley Mudford. So railway opening with spin from the nursery end. No real flight, and as here can get underway. As I mentioned, that other semi-final, the Hills, actually 35 without loss after two overs. Max Harrington's opening over, the second over of the game, going for 25. So Nicola Lysgaard has four sixes already, 32 off 11. So the Hills will feel very much in control at Anglesey Row. This game, a little bit in the balance. At one stage, it didn't look that when Riley Mudford Made his wonderful century, but at 172 required. Both sides were further in the game. Connor Fletcher gets his first boundary. Well, he's been in sensational form. That's a wonderful shot in the gap between extra cover and mid off. Just floated up that time from Matthew. Well, Fletcher certainly was informed during the qualifiers a century and a half century, and a number of not outs, leaving him with an average. In excess of his highest score. That's clever batting from Balbring, and it's something Railway did quite well, particularly early on. I think at this level, when you drop 
just below into provincial and at club level, I think he can afford to take those risks with rotating the strike, particularly in T20 cricket. As you can see, a wonderful shot from Conor Fletcher, and both batters now have a boundary to their names. Straight down, past the bowler. Went by him in a flash. Uh, Farouk Nazar has this ability to get quick runs. Balbriggan have a really strong batting lineup. And they're off to a wonderful start. Well, that was a lovely shot. Played very straight back. Finding the boundary. Come on, boys, come on. And suddenly, Balbriggan feeling slightly comfortable. And this, the second over. And already 20 runs on the board. Short ball, head out to deep cover. And again, it's been a feature today. The ball coming onto the bat really nicely. Wonderful wicket here, prepared by Dale McDonough and the GM by Choice team here at Sydney Parade. And we have a wonderful cup final day in prospect. One of the great days in the Cricket Leinster calendar. Finals day of the LHK Alan Murray Cup. No ball, uh, which you never like to see from a spinner. And a bit of work in the deep. And they will go for four. So very costly end to this over. Alamatu is going to have to bowl another delivery, and it's going to be a free hit. And red, this is not the start railway union would have wanted. Almost a complete opposite of the first innings. The first innings, we got a couple of wickets in the first over, and then there was a little bit of rebuilding before Mudford decided to take everybody on. <coughs> But 25, 21 on the board now. Well, that's the free hit. And it's gone down towards Long On. It'll just be a single. So an expensive over that from Alan Matthew. 17 coming from it. And Balbriggan are 27 without loss after two. You can see that no ball for front foot bowling. That's not what you want from a spinner. And it was a full toss to boot. So expensive, and uh, we saw the spin working so effectively in the first innings. 17 from the opening over of spin here in the second. Yeah, spinners bowling no balls. I mean, with pace bowlers, they, they run up maybe 30, 30 paces, 30 yards. And if they overstride by half an inch, you can very easily bowl a no ball. <clears throat> but a spinner coming off six, seven paces, you expect them to be able to find that front line with their front foot. Uh, slip out. Now for Lynn McCarthy, I wonder, does he try and bowl it a little bit fuller? We saw that big LBW appeal. Again, no short. And Fletcher just manages to get down the other end. And again, you could see Fletcher was aiming for the big shot. <coughs> Had to readjust halfway through. Didn't get round on it enough or as much as he wanted to. And the extra pace of McCarthy. Just something we haven't seen as yet in the game. Well, again, short for McCarthy, and he's done that a couple of times, just tucking Farouk up for room. And I think Farouk Nazir is just waiting for the ball to be a little bit wide, and he can throw his hands at it. Well, McCarthy targeting the rib cage of Farouk Nazir, and he's certainly getting good lift. Yeah, this is clever, smart bowling by McCarthy. He's not giving the batsmen any room to free their hands. And in fact, he's hurrying them up as well. Full uh, play down the ground will be a single, or a dot ball rather. So a couple of dots now from McCarthy. It's what Railway need after that expensive second over from Matthew. Need to find a wicket as well. You think wicket is going to be so important. Looks a really good batting, batting conditions. Railway got off to a poor start, losing two wickets in their opening over before Riley Mudford produced a sensational century. Short ball pulled well in front of square. This is a wonderful shot. The problem with continuing to bowl short deliveries is that batters can set themselves to it. That's what Farouk Nazir did here. And a wonderful shot pulled well in front of square and no chance for the man in the deep. So McCarthy just has to... Be careful, he doesn't become predictable. As you say, Farouk there, he didn't come forward at all. He was expecting the short ball, waited for it, and then put it away. Fine boundary. I used to say, McCarthy will have to think again. There, see, no footwork forwards or backwards. Just stood where he was and delivered. 
And he's almost clearing that front leg. Ready for what's to come. Go short again, and this time it's gone for six. And it's over the clubhouse. And just a couple of words between the two. Farouk Nazir saying to Lee McCarthy, well, if you're going to keep bowling short there, I'm just going to keep taking you on. So a little bit frosty out there, but a wonderful shot from Nazir. And as I said, McCarthy's just got a little bit too predictable. And Nazir's clearing that front leg. And he's found another boundary. And this is not what Rao I need. And McCarthy's been a little bit expensive as well. Back-to-back -back boundaries. You see here, Nazir, he's well outside his leg stump anyway. And yeah, yeah, the yeah, ball yeah. followed in there. He just swiveled on it and lifted it onto the clubhouse roof. Six more onto the total, and that total is raced up to 38. And this is a partnership. This isn't like Mudford going around and taking on all comers and looking for support. This is, uh, this is an actual partnership between these two. One on 12, the other one 22. They've both reached the boundary. Willie Clark questioning whether this is the original match ball. Kevin Gallagher providing Willie Clark with a selection. He heads back out to the middle. Well, that was a fine shot onto the roof of the clubhouse. Farouk will feel good for that. He's now moved on to 22. And quite su surprisingly, he's well outscoring his partner. But then again, he has faced 11 deliveries. Well, an update from Anglesey Road on the hills. Very much in control. Nicola Lysgaard has got to his half century and just 15 deliveries with seven sixes. So Marion right under the cosh. And as it stands, it looks like it is going to be an all fingal affair in the LHK final. Around 4.30 today. The railway need to find wickets, similar to Marion up in Anglesey Road because a couple of more overs from Farouk and Fletcher do a large damage again short from McCarthy good running from this pair that's good good calling from Fletcher Farouk not quite as fast out of the blocks but they both make their ground safely that's three overs gone and 39 on the board well as you say railway well they need something to happen here now ideally they'd want a couple of wickets but even just to slow the scoring rate a bit would be uh, positive at this stage. Uh, 39 with our loss after three overs. So that required run rate below eight. Started above eight and a half. So we're going to have a change of bowling. After three overs, Railway had reached 32 for two, and that was when Mudford had started his assault on the Balbriggan bowling. Well, well we're going to have a change of bowling. It's going to be Hasher Sultan. Sultan. So the bowlers that come on now from Railway immediately under pressure. Well, not easy conditions to come in and bowl to it. They have to find a way of breaking this opening partnership. A big appeal. The umpire has a Mali Beg saying that one's gone down the leg side. And they can run through for a leg boy. Umpire very clear on that straight away. Slower ball, but a full toss. Uh, work to do for Cow Corner. They can't get there. So Balbriggan are really motoring. Connor Fletcher gets in on the act again. It's a full toss. A railway again, similar to the first innings. They just have no answer. It's poor delivery from Sultan. And almost a freebie for Connor Fletcher. And he doesn't miss out. Well, Sultan trying to bowl a slower delivery there. 
but it affected the length. It turned it into a full toss and it was punched away for four. Oh, this is a wonderful shot, Connor Fletcher, down towards the dressing rooms. Beautifully done. Just moved outside the leg stump, gave him his arms a bit of room. And it was pitched up and it was beautifully played over a long off. Well, the fielder is in the ring there. And even if he was on the rope, it would have sailed over his head. Wonderful shot from Connor Fletcher. So, as you see, the change of field, third man comes into the ring and Sean O'Brien moves out to long off now. Back-to-back -back boundaries. And the 50-run opening partnership comes up inside four overs. Short ball high in the air. Chancellor Lee McCarthy running back. Can't get there. Just couldn't make the ground up quick enough. A little bit similar to when Riley Mudford was dropped a little bit earlier by Farouk, who just could not get, get there and make the ground. Lee McCarthy, always difficult running over your shoulder. And a little bit of a life for kind of flexure. Well, Sultan would have thought his luck was in when that one went that high. Unfortunately, the fielder couldn't collect. Oh, really good running in the end. And it's been a feature of the day. Both sides very comfortable in knocking it in, into the ring and picking up a single. Railway under the pump here. Final ball of the fourth over. Of course, fielding restrictions for the opening six overs. Just two men allowed on the boundary. Short ball, and it's going to be a wide, and it's not what Railway need at this stage. And that's what happens when you're under pressure. If you bowl a full, you've disappeared. So trying to just change things up. Yep. He's uh, trying different things, Soljan. One feels that maybe be better off trying to find a rhythm, trying to find his stock ball, just to get it up there. Short ball pulled away, and again, the fielder's on square. So that delivery with the field with no fine leg is a poor one, and it's a freebie, and another expensive over, and Bal Brigan have raced out of the blocks They've moved to 58 without loss after four overs. And we're, it looks like we're heading for an all Fingal affair in the final with the Hills off to a wonderful start down in Anglesey Road. Balbriggan, same here in Sydney Parade. And you can see some of the boundaries on your screens. Well, there's been plentiful. 18 off that over, the fourth. And that was probably one of the shots of the day so far from Connor Fletcher for six towards the dressing rooms. Well, it's, it's a match for the other shot of the day we've seen so far. When Mudford put one a similar place, but the other end. I think Liam McCarthy will be a little bit disappointed. There's a couple of different techniques to try and take those catches. Sometimes you just keep your eyes firmly on the ball and you let your feet follow. Other times some people like to sprint early into position and then look up. And in the end, Liam McCarthy just could not quite get there. And it's going to be Sean O'Brien now. As I said earlier, difficult time to ball. It's coming on from the St. John's end. Well, right, need a bit of inspiration. And can Sean O'Brien produce it? Well, Liam McCarthy is captain. He's having to pull all the cards out of his deck here. Each one so far has been trumped by the batsman. There it is. There's the inspiration Railway needed. And it's Sean O'Brien. Well, Connor Fletcher. Or it's, uh, it is Fletcher. He'll be really disappointed with that outside the off stump. Wafting at one. And a thin edge through. And a big wicket for Sean O'Brien. Well, we said Railway needed something. Sean O'Brien has found a big wicket. And that might just help stem the flow of runs. It's something for Railway to cling on to. Well, Railway, you could tell from the absolute joy at taking that wicket, they were... Fair play to O'Brien. It's almost a loosener. It's outside off. You could see why Fletcher went after it. 
but all he could do was feather it through to the keeper. It was there, and feather through, and you can see his disgust. He's checking his footwork, he's checking his bat, checking everything to get through there, but unfortunately he had taken the edge and taken by the keeper, and Railway really needed that wicket. Nephew, of course, of Kevin and Niall O'Brien, the internationals for many years. But the thing I like there about Sean O'Brien, while his team are in the huddle, he's down checking his run-up. I think he feels like he might be able to get a couple of wickets here and be the inspiration. And Kevin O'Brien so often was, of course, the head coach of Railway Union. Can his nephew, Sean, produce some big spell here? New batter for about bringing his Cameron Rowe. And 11 deliveries left of the opening power play. See, that's what wickets can do. It's going to take Cameron Rowe a couple of deliveries to stem that flow of runs that was in excess of 13 and a half run rate. Equation now 114 from 16 overs. And again, as you say, taking taking the wicket makes a big difference, and suddenly he's got a couple of dot balls together as well. <coughs> and it looks like a tidy over. Yeah, it just means that the bowlers coming on aren't under the pump as much as they were. Sean O'Brien came on a really difficult time to bowl the two overs previous, and well, they've gone for 18 and 17. Well, a good lift this time from Sean O'Brien. And this is what can happen in the big cup knockout game. Sometimes inspiration can come from the younger players playing with a little bit of, with, with no fear. And coming from the sporting pedigree that Sean O'Brien comes from, he'll be well used and well ready for the big stage. High in the air, and third man is in the ring, so it's going to be a boundary. Bit of a loose delivery from Sean O'Brien, not too dissimilar to the wicket delivery he got. Uh, that'd be a boundary that just gets Cameron Rowe underway. Well, I might get Rowe underway, but O'Brien will be thinking that he got another edge there, and this one did fly away, but there's only millimetres between an edge that flies away past that fielder at short third, and one that finds him. So still, there's still hope there for Railway. They need to take a couple more wickets just to put the Balbriggan batting line up under some pressure, give them some something to think about. That's a glorious shot. So Sean O'Brien be really disappointed. Final two deliveries of what looked a really good over. Go for four. And Cameron Rowe with a wonderful shot. That'll just give him a little bit of confidence. He's got two boundaries now. And Bal Brigan, after five overs, are 66 for one. And I'll hand you over now to Isabel Joyce and Mark Jones. Thanks, Sean. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, Mark Jones. Good afternoon, Isabel. <coughs> Our co-commentator's having a bit of an issue getting out. He's <laughs> caught himself up in his headphones. We have a game on. Well, it looks almost like Balbriggan are taking it away from Railway Union quite swiftly here. Ever since the 15th over of the first innings, they've been well on top. They've pulled that first inning score back quite sharply when it looked like it was going to be upwards of 200. And now 66 for one after just five, still an over of power play to go. The wicket in the last over could be, could be the breakthrough that Railway were looking for and needed. Fletcher was looking to continue on from his fine form from last week where he made 100 to get, uh, to get Bob Riggin here. Asher Sultan, you cannot bowl that short at your pace. That was fodder for Nazar. Finds the gap with ease and sends it for four. Yeah, too short and wide this time. 
and he just helped himself to a, a nice comfortable four through the covers. Well, they've taken the pace off by giving the ball to Sultan, but your margin for error at that pace is quite small when there are only two fielders out in the air, but wide of mid on, and that one's going to kick on and back to back boundaries for Nazar. Yeah, he really needs to sort out his line of length there. He's just bowling too short. As you say, the pace he's bowling at, you know, guys can go deep in the crease or, or, or advance down the wicket to them. So you have to be spot on. I'll just keep you up to date of what's going on in the other semi-final. And if it's the runs are flowing here in Pembroke, they're flowing even more down in railway for Nicolas Demgard legs guard. He's on 75 from just 25 balls. Incredible smashy, smashy. hitting. 11 sixes, I see. Taking the game away from Marion, 83 without loss after six overs. That's a poor bit of fielding in the deep. That hands Nazar his third four in just three deliveries. Yeah, he's he certainly caught hold of that, but there's no need for that kind of that kind of fielding in the deep. You need to get your body behind it at this level. I'd say Coach O'Brien would be looking on with a bit of a bit of disgust that that's gone through for four. It should have just been a single. It can be difficult on that side of the ground in Pembroke. It's where the rugby pitches, so. It's sometimes a, a bit worrying to go down and get the body behind it flicked off and well watched by Sean O'Brien. Um, yeah, you, you worry about your teeth sometimes on that part, part of the ground that it's going to rear up. Saw one last night in the T20 blast that just bounced over Sean Abbott's head when it was rolling along the ground. So, yeah, it's we'll, we'll give him about 20% of the misfield for that but it still should have been stopped it should have been stopped I need a wicket railway union need to break through good running here again between these two after a bit of a shaky start for Nazir between the wickets where there looked to be a very tight run out in the first or second over he seems to have calmed down a bit well this was the first four through just beat the fielder in covers, timed it perfectly. Then it was too short and straight, helped wide of mid on. And that was followed up by another short one that was hit towards the fielder in the deep. And unfortunately, a bit of poor fielding. While well, he did get hold of it, meant that there were three fours instead of just the two in the over. And that's the end of the power play as well, is he? And it's 80 for one. Sean O'Brien to continue. Starts with a wide. So first ball of the outside the power play to be bowled again. 171 was the final total that Railway posted and was much below what we thought when we were on together, Mark, in, in the first innings when that, that innings from Mudford was really getting going. Yeah, it looked for all mine like it was going to be a score well in excess of 200, but well, Bob Riggan pulled it back nicely. Tight here. Well, Mudford, that 100 was incredible, but the lower order that followed him, with the exception probably of Kruger, who didn't get enough of the strike, in my opinion, they just handed their wickets away. Criminal stuff. They did. The uh, The scorecard doesn't make for pleasant reading for most of the uh, the railway lineup. You got a 100 up top, you got a 20 in the middle, and you got a 20 not out. You add in 10 extras. <laughs> Doesn't make up for a lot for the other seven. <laughs> but still, in the first over, when you're, when you're, whatever it was, six for two, to end up at 171, I'd say they would, would have bitten your hand off here. Whipped leg side. And not easy in the deep. Kruger does well. 
hit with some parrot. Cameron Rope. Yeah, he seems to like walking across the stumps and flicking the ball to the leg side. To raise a man out of deep square, or sorry, deep mid wicket, I should say. Maybe he's looking for the vacant square leg or, or long leg boundaries. Bowling to his field well here, Sean O'Brien. Outside the power play, of course, now, so able to spread the field. Fielder down in deep mid wicket, long on, long off, cover and third. Deep point out there as well, is it? Yeah, it's quite square, that field right in the deep. I'd call that cover, but I think you're right. It's it's more like a point. Oh, well, a bit of luck. I was well, talking to Sean's father, Ger O'Brien, there a few minutes ago when he he was telling me that he, he likes to bowl big inducers, so... As you say, he is bowling through his field at the moment. I always think it's the, the problem is more in women's cricket actually than men's because you're only allowed four outside in, in the women's game. But you can really telegraph what you're <laughs> going to bowl. Clipped away fine. That'll beat the fielder in 45. Classy stuff from Nazar as he edges ever closer to his half century. Seventh over finishes with a boundary. Disappointment of Sean O'Brien, but Balbriggan will be cock a hoop. Seven overs gone. And they're well on top. Yeah, looking at the worm on the screen there. They're well in, they're well in, well in it in the run chase here. Well above the rate so far. Sean O'Brien there just drifting, drifting too straight onto leg stump and nicely clipped away for a boundary. Fruk now looking for a drink or a change of gloves or something here. He just saw it there on the right play. He stood up tall and just flicked it away off his off his legs. I'm just looking while uh, Railway make sure of their field here, looking at this, the bowling card for Marion down the road and three of their bowlers have bowled one over and gone for 70 of the runs. So three overs for 70 between three of the Marion bowlers. That's... I saw Max stuff. went for 25. Max Ernst went for 25 in his first over. Yeah, swapping on Modgill as well. As Sean Stanton went for 20. So, Mohamed Sinan's doing well for them. Not for 11 from two. That's a cracking return. <laughs> yeah, Tom in Stanton. Not for seven from two. <laughs> <laughs> so, they put the squeeze on now. And, and, and as you see on your screen here, there is, a, there is a change of bowling. Introduction of spin, which was key in the first innings. And it brought the breakthroughs. Yeah, Fakir Zaman. Slip is in. Railway on the attack. They know they need to get some wickets and they need to do it fast because at this stage, 13 nervous to go and just 82 required. Yeah, you're not going to defend it from here, so wickets are key. You need to break this partnership. So I like the ploy of getting the slip in place. And this is probably the, the one that they'll be hoping for the most, Nasser. It's, it's an interesting field. Dances down. You know, with a slip in place and he still has a long off. You know, if you're looking to try and get the slip into play, you're looking for a guy to drive. I reckon they just... The other fielding position is third, and they've decided we might as well. So put you're a just slip plugging in. it there, okay? Yeah. Okay. Because it doesn't look at all, by any stretch of the imagination, like it's going to make its way to slip at the at the moment. Not very from straight. the line that he's bowling. No, it's not. Big appeal. Not out. It looked like it was sliding down. It did as Nazar came down the track. But there seemed to be a good six or seven inches down leg. Floated up in the air, but the fielder had gone deep in the ring. 
brilliant over from Zaman. He goes for just three in his first over. Yeah, you just see on the replay there. It looked to be tight enough, but now to see it again, but I'd still reckon it's probably beaten leg just going on with the arm. Probably hit in front of middle and middle and leg when I'm just sliding on. Yeah, I think it was actually doing too much. You can't give that out when he's that far down. But uh, eight overs gone now, and Bob Regan just slowing down a little bit. They're 93 for one. Nazar's still at the crease. Cameron Rowe playing the... Uh, the uh, I can't think of the phrase I'm trying to say. <laughs> Second fiddle at the moment. Nazar being the aggressor more so. Yeah, now it's 47 off 26 deliveries. Looks like we're going to have another change of bowling here again. And we're going to have a second spinner into the attack. I was crying out for spinning the... And we appear to be back now fully. Apologies for that. Well, if you missed anything, it's been a couple of dot balls, but we did also have a dropped catch. Tough chance behind the stumps. And uh, extra bounce meant that it was difficult to keep up with that bounce. Yeah, Munford, the keeper there, struggled to hang on. He had a couple of, couple of goes at it. Excellent. Excellent flight from Man. Good courage from him. Throws it up, and uh, it's a really good opening over from him. Thought he had the breakthrough, but Cameron Rowe survives. That's the end of nine overs. And uh, just a couple of runs from it. Yeah, really good start from Man. As I was alluded to in the first innings, I'd like to see the pace taken off the ball when when the medium paces are going the distance. Um, Bob Reagan are very slow to it in the first innings. But Railway seem to have, have learned from the mistakes. As the man continues from the nursery end. And Rowe happy to punch it down the ground for a single. Absolutely. I, I think when... Uh, seam isn't working you've got to turn to your spinner so they didn't look comfortable doing it inside the power plate and as it dances down again Zaman does the work in the deep sorry it's not Zaman it's Sultan he's, they need to stop swapping their shirts around they do <laughs> Punch through the offside. Liam McCarthy, a little bit of a fumble. Lays the single. It would have been decent from uh, Zaman to bowl the ball and then field it at long off. But <laughs> Some trick that one, all right. <laughs> 100 up. It's going to be brought up in style. That's a big six from Nasser, and it brings up his 50 as well. 54 now for him. 
He's playing a gem of a knock as Balbriggan looked to chase this total down from Railway. Yeah, a bit of extra flight this time. And Nazir had no hesitation in taking out the big slog sweep and has absolutely smashed out over the the deep mid wicket boundary for six. And, and as you say, brings up his 50 in fine style. 50 coming off 29 deliveries. But that would be a second six and and eight fours. So kind of a similar 50 to what happened in the first innings with Munford. Can he kick on now and and get a 15 ball 50 in the second innings as well and, and put this game to bed? Not if he keeps hitting singles like that. Well, the 100 is up. Uh, we're just trying to catch up with our graphics on the screen right now. Good footwork from Rowe. Lovely balance as he punches that one through the offside. Oh, we're back up and running with the graphics. One ball to go in the first 10. With the scores, sorry. The score is back up and running. And it's 10 overs done in the second innings. And Balbriggan well on top, 107 for one. With that, Isabel Joyce has departed the scene, praying for a miracle up in, up, up in Merion. <laughs> or, is, or is the child minding more, more important at this point? She says child minding, fair enough. So just a 60 odd required us. 10 hours to go. It should be a bit of a walk in the park from at this stage, isn't it? Good afternoon. Jones, good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, it looks set to be an all finger all final. The Hills just need 46 runs. In the last 10 overs there, they're 120 for none after 10. Nicholas Lysgaard with 13 sixes. So it's set to be a, a really interesting final if it is those two. Paul Brigham here really in the, in the ascendancy. This game's had a little bit of everything. Seen some powerful hitting, good catches. The, the leg spin. I must say, I like to look at this the, the leg spinner man. He's uh, he's not afraid to give it a bit of air. He gives a bit of gives a bit of whip from his wrist, and has has, has provided the breakthrough so far. Yeah, he's been really affected this year in particular. And he's bowling really well here. Uh, he seems to be bowling with nice wicket control, which is a diff difficult skill to do as a as a wrist spinner. I know myself from dabbling in it a couple of times. I'd forward them be in the middle of the wicket normally. That one played into the offside. Well, some news from Anglesey Road is that Nicholas Lysgaard has got to a century from just 35 deliveries with 15 sixes, wow. two fours, striking at 277. So it is going to be the Hills. They just need 33 runs in the final. And that's good over from Hamzaman. Tries to stem the onslaught from Balbriggan. But what scoring that is. I don't know about you, Jonesy. I haven't seen Nicola Lysgaard yet, the Danish player. Of course, with Jeremy Bray's background in coaching in Denmark. But I am looking forward to seeing him. Well, if he's hit... 15 sixes in Marion. He must be in pretty good touch to come must down be. here. Must be, yeah. Yeah, small boundary short there in Marion. Obviously, he's, I can only assume that he's uh, taken full advantage of that and, and would look to do the same down here if, if they do make the final. Um, and as you say, Jeremy Bray's... Jeremy Bray's Dutch... Not Dutch. Um, Danish background. He's... Uh, I think the Lancer Lightning Bolts went over there about five or six years ago. We brought a team over there and a very nice setup there just outside Copenhagen in, in Bromby. And uh, Jeremy would obviously know all the Danish players coming through the system and and bring them over when he can. I think he had a few in North Kildare a few years ago as well. Um, Nigel Pine would have been the analyst for Denmark for a while and Nigel lives out in Kilcock. And we'll be a member of that out in North Kildare. A change of bowling. Brandon Kruger in and immediately gets a wicket. Well, there's one thing about Railway is they're not going to give up. And they've just started to turn the, 
squeeze a little bit and a big wicket for Brandon Kruger. That's a massive wicket in the context of this game. Azir has to go for 55. He's not too happy about it. Hangs on for a while, but Willie Clark was was pretty confident in his in his decision. He had, had no hesitation in putting the finger up. Just see it here in the replay. Goes for the big hike again. And the bales are whipped off straight away. Might have a more better look from this angle. Yeah, it looks, it looks like it was a good decision for Willie Clark. The foot might have just, if it ever got back over the line, I'm not sure. But a good decision there from Willie by the looks of things. Well, Riley Mudford was sensational with the bat. He was very, did very well there to get the bales off. But there's a wicket in Pembroke. There's also a wicket in Anglesey Road. Well, we told you about that wonderful 100 from Nicola Loisgaard. He is out now. 100 off, 37 deliveries. You Seb Dixtra gets the wicket with just 33 runs needed for the hill. So it seems like very much a match-winning contribution from Nicola Loisgaard. So we may see him in action. The final, of course, at the LHK Alamuri Cup takes place at 4.30 this afternoon. Wonderful sunshine. So if you're in the area, it's set to be, set to be a really fascinating game, regardless of who plays. Will it be a team? Will it be an all Fingal derby or will it be a north-south one in the final? Rowe will be hoping it's the ladder and a new man to the crease. It looks to be Christopher Defray. Get that clarified. Not 109 for two. They're still very much in it. Wickets is what they need, Jonesy. Yeah, very much so they do. And um, with that wicket, though, is it Christopher Freitas, is it? Um, you know, bit of a bit of a chink of light for railway. They need to they need to walk through the door now and get a couple of quick ones and really put the cat amongst the pigeons. Nicely played off the back foot there, punched into the covers for a single. But you know, Bob Riggin, if they just bat sensibly, they need 62 runs of eight and a half overs. It should be a walk in the park from here, you, you, you'd think. You can nearly go risk-free cricket at this stage and just knock seven right off the over, no problem. Now, there's one thing, is this Rower unit side is not going to give in. I think they'll be a little bit disappointed with their batting at the back end of that innings. Maybe just needed a little bit of experience. There's a lot of poor dismissals towards the end. Brandon Kruger about a well for his 21, and he's bowling nicely here. Yeah, he doesn't mind throwing it up, trying to get it over that eye line. Making it difficult for the batter, especially if you're new in. Cameron Rowe to the back foot there. Just going through, knocking that one through point for a single into the deep. Well, I'm sure there'll be a lot of people having heard about Nicola Loisgaard. Uh, just having a couple of te technical difficulties there. We're back on. I'm sure there'll be a lot of people that'll be seeing the work of Nicola Loisgaard. It will be 15 sixes he hit in Merion. I think they'll be thinking about coming down for a watch here. Want to bring a crash helmet though, would you, wouldn't you? Ball well, flying everywhere. Well, Neil Rock hit 16 sixes last week for Rush in the Irish National Cup. So 15 isn't bad for Nicola Loisgaard. So there must be something out in the water in Fingal. Yeah, but the National Cup is 50 over, isn't it? He's only playing T. He's only played T20 today. Well, interesting part of the game. Hamza Man has been very impressive with his leg spin. Not picked up a wicket yet. He'll be hoping to change that. And a couple of wickets here might just change the game. Yeah, chance went down off him as well in his, in his first over. The only blot on Mon Manford's uh, copybook today. It was a tough chance standing up. Big thick outside edge. the batsman the ball coming back in lack of foot movement there played into the leg side and he'll get a boundary 
So rare poor delivery from Hamza Man. And it goes for four. Yeah, big full toss and put away for four. Very nicely played. Didn't try and over hit that, just down on one knee. Punched. Punched by Defreitas for four. Very nice, very nice shot. Rebbe really need to do something to try and stem the runs here. I'm not quite sure what the point is of just having the four men in the ring. You know, they need wickets. And they need wickets fast. Again, just too full from man. He's struggling a bit this over with his length. Well, you mentioned there about needing wickets. And, and I watched a couple of the Interpro games over the last week or so. It's been about the point of difference. A lot of people speak now about raw pace, that extra yard of pace, and also leg spin. So they have it here in Hamza Man. There it is, and there's the wicket. Well, a couple of times when they've gone to play off the back foot to the leg spinner, it hasn't quite worked. He got a, they had a life earlier. Rowe has to go now. Hamza Man gets his man. He drags on, a little bit similar to the dismissal of Kenny Carroll earlier. And Railway, they just don't go away, and they never give in. And who knows? There may well be a South Dublin side in the Leinster Alamari Cup final. That was a very soft dismissal, in my opinion. Just here, see it here. No, you don't. That's the four from earlier on. Just getting a bit of abuse off Walshy there, the producer. Um, here it is here. Try to work it down a third man. He could have done anything with that one, really, and just caught in two or three minds, probably. Didn't. Probably do, was that the Google you think us? Certainly a top spirit that went straight on on the bottom edge and, and uh, straight onto the stumps. Well, Rowe, they're a team of really fiery characters. They're not going to give in. So a wonderful win for them in the Leinster Cup first round. And Hamza Man was really boisterous in a celebration. There was a little bit of needle in that game. And now Rowe are back in it. Brings Greg Ford, the captain of Bal Brigham, to the crease. Wonderful striker of a cricket ball. Him and Christopher Freyas will be looking to get a side over the line. But all of a sudden, a couple of wickets and how things can change. It looked like very much a routine run chase for the Balbriggan pair of Nassar and Rowe. Now all of a sudden, two relatively new players to the crease. And Hamza Man is bowling beautifully. But nicely played there from Greg Ford. Just no panic, straight in. Nice push down the ground for a single. You know, the numbers in this game would suggest that it's going to be pretty straightforward for uh, for Balbriga once they keep their heads. There's plenty of time to knock off these 50-odd runs that are required at this stage. And we're just waiting for the graphics to update on your screen. The score is currently 118 for three. As, as you say, Mark, that's all they have to do, Balbriggan. Just be comfortable with knocking it around. But a good over from Hamza Man. Gets a big breakthrough. And with seven overs or so to go. I don't know about your mats. Um, Jonesy, I think it's 52 they need. 53 for Vic. 52 to tie, yeah. 52 for a super over. How about that, Huss? Would you, would you be able to handle it? <laughs> well, I, oh, my money be on railway if Riley Mudford's batting is anything to go by. What a sensational century. And it could well be fitting that if railway were to win, that we'd see the two Centurions in the semi finals, of course. Nicola Loisgaard, what a wonderful century for the Hills, who looks set to beat Marion. And Riley Mudford earlier here. What a wonderful 100, wonderful shot as well from Christopher Reitz. And he gets a boundary. This is beautifully done. You think about all the power hitting in the game of T20 cricket, but sometimes a little bit of class and skill gets equal award. A boundary for De Freitas. Yeah, beautiful shot. Played inside out over the top of extra. Very nicely played. Didn't try and over hit it. Just timed it. A couple of crucial overs here now for the spinners, I think. Well, there are two of Bob Briggins. More experienced players here. Craig Ford has played a lot of interprovincial cricket. Defray has been 
brilliant for them ever since he's joined the club. So it'll be interesting to see how they go about it. As we said, the runs acquired now down to 49. We'll get that, try and work hard to get that graphic up for you. But 49 runs now needed for Balbriggan. Okay, just pushed into the offside for a, an easy single off Kruger. Falling with nice control here from that. Someone just whacked off the camera there. Sorry about that. It's all happening here at the moment. Niall Walsh, the technician, and who, who runs the streaming here, is 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 frantically trying to get everything right. Big but, appeal, but I think there's a definitely two noises there. I thought us. Yeah, it's just a qu question of whether it's pad or bat first, and umpire as a Mali beg. I think he's saying it's bat first because otherwise that looked pretty adjacent tight line from Brandon Kruger yeah that looked dead otherwise I think definitely definitely the nick four the one thing I would say Jones you haven't watched the, the spin bowlers on this wicket as that over comes to an end I think there's six overs left here uh, Bob Regan 124 for three needing 48 for victory so 48 and six overs yeah, 48 off six required. Seven wickets still in the bag. I think from looking at it, the slower you bowl on this wicket, the more difficult it is to hit. Um, that's why the spinners are, are, are enjoying themselves. Well, that's a couple of times Hamza Man has uh, just stopped in his... Uh, well, I think he's trying to make sure that, that, that Greg Ford stays in his box more than anything else. Yeah, absolutely. That's what he's doing. As I said, very fiery cricketer. You like seeing them players. Nicely bowled. Very nicely bowled. Nicely flighted. Nice bit of turn. So 48 off 35 now required for Paul Brigham. We've got seven wickets left, and these two very experienced. The Freddies on 13, Greg Ford just new to the crease on one. Out comes the reverse sweep, big appeal. He stays there. Willie Clark's unmoved. Hamza man can't believe it. And the double teapot's out. Willie Clark just having a little word with him. Just ask him to calm down here, I think. Yeah. There was definitely bat onto ground anyway. Whether there was a bit of. Whether there was a bit of bat in it, we don't know. Woody Clark was pretty adamant though. In fairness, it was only the it was only the bowler and keeper that went up. Well, he's all action. Hamza man. This one drops a short and it's dropped. Oh, we had a perfect angle of it. And I think that went all the way into Brandon Kruger, and it looks like he might have hurt himself. It was a poor delivery from Hamza man. Nearly finds the breakthrough. Yeah, it was a half tracker this time and pulled into the into the mid wicket area. Now it was hit very hard and very low. Would have been a sensational catch if you managed to get it. But unfortunately, I think it just caught the bottom of the fingers there. And there's a life for Cameron Rowe. Well, it's been a good over this from Hamza Man. He's just building the pressure on Chris DeFreitas. And again, I wonder, <laughs> it's just getting a little bit needy out there between the two of them. Hamza Man. And he's all action. Out comes the reverse sweep. Missed again. So the dots are building, and the, so too is the pressure. And as I said, Railway never give in, and they don't go away. We've seen this from their teams over many years. And with someone like Kenny Carroll on your side, Jones, you're not going to go without a fight as the slip. Well, no, it doesn't. He comes from mid-wicket into backward points. So just reinforcing the air, the offside behind square for that shot. Very competitive side, this railway union team. There's been a fine spell of bowling for Haman, who came on in a very difficult time for uh, for railway. That's been a really good over. 
can he find a way out of it 125 for three final ball of the 15th so all of a sudden the boundary options have dried up and it's all down really to the brilliance from Hamza Man. it's the power of leg spin brilliant work from Brandon Kruger just keeps that pressure building and we have a real climax to this game on our hands well, just as the Hills are about to get over the line against Marion, this one still very much firmly in the balance. And I'll leave you in the hands of Craig Senior. And first, Isabel Joyce. Thank you very much, Jean Hussey. And good afternoon again to all of our viewers. Well, it looked for all money like Bob Brigham were going to cruise home, but enter spin. And it's not academic anymore. Brendan Kruger continues from the nursery end. So just to keep you up to date, 46 now required from 29 deliveries. We're trying to catch up on the scoreboard. And we'll keep you up to date with the, what's required vocally. Strong shot down the ground. That's an excellent shot. Greg Ford imperiously stands there and sends that over Kruger's head. Beautiful four straight down the ground. Well, that finishing line getting closer and closer. And certainly, uh, ball is definitely in Balbriggan's court at the moment. Greg Ford takes on Kruger again, but sends it to long on oh, score just ticking along well you get the feeling railway need a bell brigand collapse at this stage two or three wickets just to turn things around and slow the rate down well 41 now required from 27 so that's not not easy at all takes the pace off and they take on the fielder it has to be quick had to hit though Greg Ford gets home well the running between the wickets from both teams has been excellent it hasn't just been bish bash boundaries all the time a lot of these runs have been taken and taken sharply funny you mentioned that actually a lot of the time when you have hitters in like N Nazir uh, like Mudford the running declines but it's been really good all the way through Ford sends it wide of extra cover, straight of extra cover, and it's another boundary for the Balbriggan skipper. Well, he threaded the eye of the needle with that, just getting it past the fielder in the ring, and then it was between two, well, between two fielders on the boundary, and another four, and the runs required comes down yet again. 36 required now. And so uh, it's it. So these are the two fours. That one, he didn't even, he knew he didn't need to run. He'd hit it well enough to beat the long off fielder. That was the first ball. And then this one angled the bat beautifully to send it past Liam, a despairing Liam McCarthy there. He's diving to his right. Well, once it beat McCarthy, the only thing that was going to stop it was the fence. Yeah, you got it. Great player to have coming in at five, Greg Ford, classical batsman. Well, there were there's a bit of a wobble there for Balbriggan. It would have given Balbriggan fans comfort to see their captain striding out to the middle. Last ball of the 16th. Dances down, doesn't get much of it though. Just sends it down to Zaman for one. So 35 required from the final four overs. 16 gone and Balbriggan 136 137 for three well with only three wickets down Balbriggan do have wickets in hand when they decide to chase after this the required run rate just a dot under nine so Railway will still consider themselves in this game absolutely I mean one got over it and actually I always say this, but you feel like it needs to be this one. If they can, if they can go at either run a ball or um, 
even better in this over, then pressure comes right back onto Balbriggan. Conversely, a few boundaries early on in this over, and Balbriggan put it to, will put it to bed somewhat. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Greg Ford take on Man here, who's bowling from the St John's end, Hamza Man. Well, as we start this 17th over, score 137 for three. Both of these batsmen now well in. It's not Hamza Man. It is Shaka uh, Zaman. Bowling his off spin. Got a serious lift there. And enjoy bowling from this end. And he just hit the ridge there. Feet goes high. And I'll just watch that one sail over the side screen. Didn't hit it as well as he might have liked, but he hit it well enough. Greg Ford, six more to the total. That one traveling about 57 meters. And that boundary only 55 meters away. Cleared that one quite comfortably. Six more onto the total. And the runs required drops below 30. Dances down again, takes on the fielder again, and it's the same result. Back to back maximums, Greg Ford. He wants to get this over quickly. Well, that'll take the score up to 149, I believe. Yeah, 23 required now from 21 deliveries. So all of a sudden, it's almost at a run of ball. A couple of sixes makes all the difference. It certainly does. And it was this part of the innings, the railway innings, where they sort of stalled and lost number of wickets and their run rate fell away at the end but for Bell Brigham it seems to be the opposite way and Greg Ford well talk about leading from the front a couple of big sixes there and he's forced to change from the bowler yeah, it was the fifth wicket partnership for Bell Brigham 104 that was that made the difference and it's this partnership again that's going to that's doing the damage for Bell Brigham comes around the wicket now. Good change. Sets the field out deep on the leg side and forward turning the strike over. Just a single, but it does bring up 150 onto the board. Just 22 more required. I wonder will Defratis take this ball on? If, if you can score a boundary here, it will knock the wind out of the railway sails. Gives himself space. Ball not really there, so happy to take the single to close out that over. 17, oh, one more to come, excuse me. So 150 up now for Balbriggan. Crick, really good feet from Ford again, dances down, picks up a low full toss. Good finish to the over from Fakhar Zaman after a couple of sixes early on. 17 overs gone and Balbriggan 151 for three. Yes, those two sixes from Ford have made such a difference to the runs required <coughs> and to the run rate required. It was a big over for Balbriggan and one that you feel has broken the back. Just 20 runs required now from three overs. And you can see on the worm how Balbriggan have engineered this choice. Those two wickets around the 12th over, 12th, 14th over, and uh, that slowed things down a little bit, but once again, those two sixes from forward have brought that red line right back up to the blue one. The incredible graphic that they came out the block so fast, Balbriggan, and then a couple of wickets slowed them down, but these two have come out and batted well. A couple of fours in the 16th over, and then a couple of sixes, sixes in the 16th or the 17th um, has really brought Balbriggan back on top. So Liam McCarthy says it's now or never. I'm going to come back on. He's changed ends as well, the captain. He would have been disappointed with his opening spell. He's railway's trump card with the ball. Just didn't get it right today. I'll make all the difference to his day if he can come back with a few wickets here and get railway in with a chance. 6.67 required and over now. Just 
played away for a single on the leg side. The boundary rider makes sure it's no more than a single. Yeah, all the field is out on the leg side, apart from a man inside the ring at 45. A different field for the left-handed to freight as midwicket will stay inside the ring. Nope, he's sending him back and out. So three out on the leg side. Another one straight at long off and cover out on the boundary as well. Difficult to see how he's taking wickets with this field, Greg. He's got to hit the stumps, really. Two straight sent backward of square. Work to do in the deep. O'Brien puts in the dive. And he can't save the boundary. Good placement from De Freitas. And Valbriggan looked to be marching on. Four, four for De Freitas. And McCarthy straying down the leg side. A bit more understandable when he's got the left-hander there now, but he didn't want to be bowling there. He allowed the batsman just to flick it round the corner, and once he beat the man on the 45, it really was a race against O'Brien, railing round the boundary. One that the ball won. 15 there required. Two straight, helped on its way. Chance in the deep. Taken! Well, De Freitas saw it was there to be hit. He tried to pull it round to the gardens. He didn't get enough on it. And it's landed safely in the hands of young O'Brien. And is there a final twist in the tail here? It's been a very twisty tail, <laughs> Craig. Uh, I mean, every time we go off air, you think one team's got firmly got the game by the scruff of the neck. And then by the time you come back, the other team is in the ascendancy. That's the four runs that was the previous delivery. Classical shot, clipped off the legs. He used the pace not well, and O'Brien couldn't quite catch up with it. But uh, this delivery got onto him a little bit quicker than, I, than he thought, De Freitas, and had to hit it on the up. And you won't get easier catches in the deep than that, Mr. O'Brien. Took it well, though. And... Uh, Balbriggan lose their fourth wicket for 157. 2.3 hours left now and 15 required. So uh, they just need a run a ball at this stage. But nerves and finals are a funny thing. Knockout competitions. And now you've got batsman number six coming in. It's not often Balbriggan have had to reach this far down into their order during this year's LHK group. Alan Murray, T20. Cup. Well, every dot ball now being applauded by the crowd on the sidelines. Decent crowd now. Railway obviously being the closer club. Probably have more supporters down here in their canary yellow. And again, McCarthy, another dot. Just going to want to bowl as many balls as possible to Dylan Luce here as they can. Greg Ford looks in fine touch down the other end. So they want him off strike and they want him stewing down the other end worried about how many balls are being chewed up by his new partner and three dots in a row to close out the seventh the 18th over so Balbriggan after 18 are 157 for four 15 still required from just 12 deliveries. Well, McCarthy doing exactly what his side needed there, taking the wicket and then following it up with three dot balls. Well, there may only be 14 runs required. But there is only 12 balls remaining. And it'll be interesting to see how Ford approaches this now. He'll be facing O'Brien. Well, cricket is one of those games where you're only proven right or wrong after you've made your decision. So he's going to decide to either attack and try and win the game himself. And if he does it, then he's made the right choice. And if he gets out, well, he should have knocked it around. <laughs> and uh, I'm interested to see which way 
Greg Ford, Ford goes about it. Well, he's well set there now. We've seen him hit a couple of very clean sixes back over the bowler. Sean O'Brien. Too full, but the field is set for it. They're going to take the single, so loose. We'll be back on strike, having faced three dots in the in the previous over. This is just what Railway wants. Short of a wicket, that is. Well, it's also challenging for the bowler. He's now got a left hole hander. He's going around the wicket, and the last thing he can do now is is bowl any extras. This is getting too tight to be giving away free runs. He looks very confident in his plans, Sean O'Brien. He's grown up in an era that uh, cricket, T20 cricket is quite incredible. Played all around the world all year round. So he'd be used to seeing the different skills and different fields being set in T20 cricket. Sets the field deep on the leg side. Third and fine inside the ring. So it's going to be full. Full it is. And they're going to take the single. Has to hit. Didn't hit. And another hit. Oh, well. Sean O'Brien thinks that the batsman has to get out of his way. He doesn't. He was ran on his natural line, so he's entitled to do that. Perfectly straight line. No adjustment to get between ball and stumps. And for his troubles, the batsman collected the ball in, shall we say, the posterior area. Well, that little fumble behind the stumps. How costly is that going to prove to well, be? Well, he'd have been out by a mile. Yeah, he was very close. Riley Mudford. Close but no cigar. Craig Ford gets back on strike. Full again, lifts it over. Chance in the deep. Keeps fading away from long off. Excellent placement from the ball. Brigham skipper. And that misfield behind the stumps looking more costly by the second. Well, just nine required now and Ford, he was well aware of where the gap in the field was and he lifted it there without fear of dismissal. And it just, as you said, it just kept fading away. It was like one of my golf shots. It just kept going off to the rough. <laughs> he goes again. Streaky but effective. Couldn't give with Sean O'Brien, not with this field. He did, and he's paid the price back-to-back -back boundaries. Well, we said at the start of the over, we wondered how Ford was going to approach this. And, well, he's shown us with two fours that he's in a rush. Gave himself room, sent it wide of long off. That was the better of the two shots. Kept fading away like Craig Senior's golf shots, I believe. And that one is going to go all the way in a big hurry. Greg Ford, four, four, six, and see yourself into a final. Well, what a way to close out what's been an incredible match for the LHK Insurance Alan Murray Cup T20 finals day. This is the second semi final to finish. The Hills winning very easily down in Marion, thanks to an incredible century down there by uh, Balbriggan opener. We'll bring you more on that soon, but uh, this game, well, it looked like it was going to come down to the wire, but Greg Ford, four, four, and then that six. That was probably the best connection he's had all day. Beautiful six into the car park. Well, it bounced a couple of times and disappeared over the wall into the gardens as well. But a fitting shot to end an exciting game of cricket, worthy of a semi-final. It swung one way and then the other. But Greg Ford, he's done a super job coming in for his team. When things were starting to slow down and, and he's picked up the pace at exactly the right time and he's ensured that we'll see a Fingal final at 4.30. Yeah, 41 for Greg Ford down there at number five. Dylan Luce only had to stay there with his captain. Connor Fletcher came out of the blocks very quickly. 25 for him before he was dismissed by O'Brien. Fruit Nazar, well, almost perfect from him before he was stumped. And everyone really contributing for Balbriggan as they chased down that 172 
with an extra run inside the penultimate over. Yes, it was a close game in the end. Uh, one would say that perhaps Balbriggan were ahead most of the game, but Railway refused to be put away and they just kept edging back into the game, whether it be through uh, the fine century for Riley Mudford in the first innings or their bowling in the second innings when O'Brien took that wicket. Suddenly you thought that maybe, just maybe, Railway could dig it back. But they were always behind the, the eight ball. And you see there, the worm just crosses the blue line and is ahead at the important time. Not enough railway players putting in a good shift today, unfortunately, for them to get past. A very strong Balbriggan outfit down the road. The Hills chased down Marion's total very easily. They won that other semi-final. Nicolaj Damgard leg scored 100 from 37 deliveries before he was dismissed by Sebastian Dijkstra. But here, this was the story of the day. Riley um, Mudford, incredible hitting from him when all the wickets were falling around him, 101. And Liam McCarthy, 28, played second fiddle. Brandon Kruger tried his best to elevate that total when his partners were all losing their wickets. And uh, look at that, Dylan loose four for 24 in his four incredible bowling. Kept Balbriggan in the game, it has to be said. Farouk as well. Farouk Nazir, three for nine. They pulled it back for Balbriggan and ensured that it was just 172 required for victory. And Balbriggan did it at a canter in the end after a couple of wobbles late on in the second innings. Yep, Dylan Lewis was certainly the pick of the bowlers today. You notice uh, multiple wicket takers. There weren't that many, just himself and Farouk with more than one wicket. And that may have been part of the problem for Railway in the second innings. They just weren't able to get deep enough into the Balbriggan order to cause them any problems. And when Greg Ford, well, he showed what a straight bat he has, but what a powerful bat he has. Well, that was a wicket early on. Run out. Here's Nasser. He scored freely throughout his innings. 56 for him from just 33 deliveries. Scored round the ground. This one tailing down leg well Willie Clark and Azim they've had a good game and they'll probably be here for the final as well but Farouk well he played almost a pinch hitting role for Balbriggan what not uh, expected to uh, play with a particularly straight bat but he found the boundary on sufficient times and uh well, Balbriggan well deserving of their victory, but they're going to have to lift themselves again now. They'll be taking on a very strong Hills team this afternoon. Absolutely. The Hills did really well to get to the final. They'll be facing Balbriggan. That game... 4.30. We thank you so much for watching this game with us. It's been an exciting one. Join us again for the final at 4.30. That will be Balbriggan. I get that will be Balbriggan taking on the Hills from myself, from Craig, from Sean, from Mark, from Niall and from everyone at Cricket Leinster. Thank you for listening in and we hope you'll join us again later on. But for now, good afternoon.